Hey, you guys! Welcome back to We Watched a Movie. I'm Mike. I'm Jay. And before before we came on, before we came here, remember we're not cursing for like three minutes. But before we came on the show, Jay and I were talking about the gauntlet on the left over his over his right shoulder. Oh, what happened? This, First drink. This Mountain Dew's gone bad. <laughs> Nobody drink the Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew's gone bad. Uh, we we're talking about the gauntlet and what Jay does with it, and how he uses it to masturbate yeah. and, and hit blow, the, the fun. Yeah. When I blow big frothy loads, all the lights light up. Yeah. Yeah. It's comedy. It's not, this fro uh, ooh, frothy would be really gross. Actually. If you imagine yeah. that coming out of your, okay, tits, just, just like, like okay, fine. Just hot loads, hot yeah. dude load comes out. Hot <laughs> sticky cinnamon. Hot sex comes out of popping. a penis hole. And it smells like candy. It smells like candy. You know, I was reading skin. somewhere. I don't know if this is true or not. You guys could look this up. I was watching this other this this other guy stream, and he he said that the ejaculate comes out. There's no freaking way this is true. That it comes out at 25 miles per hour when it releases. That's lethal. No way. There's no way, dude. There's no, no way. way. I was gonna look it up, but then I was like, I don't want that in my search history because there's too many gay. I mean, there's too many like hot, sexy women in my search mm. history, so I don't yeah. want to like add more stuff to it. But I there's That's no. Smart. I mean, maybe it does come out that fast. I mean, I, oh, those poor women. Oh, your poor wife. <laughs> <laughs> why is your throat sore honey i don't know yeah it's I, like i don't know i just tucked off some bullets like, god, literally god, god gave women's throats like crash dust crash test dummy like you know strength so that it could withstand the force the reason why i call the s on it though is because i have tested this on one lady on accident and it hit her in the eye and it didn't blind her she just got really angry and her eye went red for a, a day or two it might have blacked it i don't know i didn't see her because we broke up after that but yeah she didn't go blind Ironically, Jay's the one who did the breaking up. <laughs> you would think it would be the other way around, you know. Well, I think I think it was already heading heading for uh, heading for a heartache because <laughs> uh, I, I, the writing was on the wall. That uh, that little shot to the eye was the exclamation point. So yeah, and it, it wasn't my way, fault, and it wasn't my fault. You can't control that, ladies. Like you ask your men to just you know pull it out and you put it over. You know, my it's it, it's it's like a live rocket bottle. You just don't know where it's gonna go. Yeah, uh, uh, but yeah, bottle rocket. That's what bottle I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah well, for sure, saying. for sure. And yeah, but it's weird because Jay was like, "Look, I know this is a sticky situation, but we're just yeah. not seeing eye to eye right now." <laughs> no, we are not. <laughs> Gotta go. Uh, yeah, that was a good one. That was a really good one. But no, seriously, like uh, with the, the 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 glove handle, like there's it, it's actually a, a it's from like Adam and Eve, like the SCX shop, right? So mm. you order it, and the inside of the palm's really soft. And it self lubricates. You can use your tears, your personal tears, to add lubrication to the gauntlet glove over Jay's shoulder there. But there's one stone missing, and then when you finally do ejaculate, the stone turns on, and yeah. then your horniness evaporates. Yeah, like yeah. Instead of here. five stones, there's actually six. They don't talk about it, but it's like it's like a it's like a liquid white that goes on there when you achieve maximum. <laughs> it's, a, it's a it's a milky, it's the milky way. Yeah, it's the milky if it's, way. If, it, if it's if it's slightly yellow, then something's wrong. You got the wrong stone. You might want to seek a doctor. That's true. Why why is it that it always stains yellow on white though? Like it doesn't look I yellow when it I comes out. I don't know, Mike. I, I I don't know why you're bringing racism up already. Jeez, <laughs> we haven't even started yet. Yeah, you look at like a t like a t shirt like a towel or something. Like it always stains yellow. It's all like, crusty. What is that about? It's all, yeah, I don't know. It gets all crusty. Yeah. You know what I think about sometimes too is like how food goes rotten really fast. Like if you leave an avocado out overnight, you wake up the next day and the things yeah. turn black and it's all gross. Or just like milk, you know, if you left milk out overnight, it would become gross. Yeah. Like sometimes it takes like 24 hours or more for food to process in your body yeah. before you poop it out. So like, yeah. do you do you think that like there's times where that 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 rotten stuff is just sitting in your? And you think that's maybe like a cause of like disease? No, what I think that is, Mike, is I think those are lost soldiers that didn't make it to the promised land, and we must honor them. Little soldier sperms that didn't make it. Oh no, not sperm. But th that's a good question too. Does it crust and get stuck to your fallopian tubes? I don't know. Do I only heard that. I, I've, I've, the, only, the, the only the exposure I've ever had to seeing what goes on when, when sperm is is ejaculated into the fallopian tubes is in "Look Who's Talking," and they were all like having a great time, and only one of them got in. That, I always think of that scene. But that's probably the most accurate. They should just show that shit in school. That yeah, cat part, no, instead of like instead of the boring book stuff, they should just show that part. 
Yeah, it's like a triathlon. Yeah, to it's, get to the tip, it's like holy to the shit, tip. my my sperm sounds like Bruce Willis. Only if you're lucky. Yeah, <laughs> if, you're, like, if your sperm sounds like Bruce Willis, you're gonna have a hell of a man baby, a man baby, <laughs> like a Giga Chad baby is what I mean. They don't even know why they're fighting to get to the tip. They're, do they? Maybe they do. Maybe they're they programmed. Maybe we, they, I mean, they, I, yeah, they're, they, I'm sure they don't. I don't know. The DNA of those little those little we were sperm little, ones. Yeah, I know. That's what, that's why I always tell people, like, hey, man, don't complain. Stop complaining about your life. Do you know how lucky you are? You could have been easily one of those, like, five million sperms that did not make it out of the tip. And then you never <laughs> even lived. I was probably just lucky. I probably, like, bumped along the wall until I found the right area. And all the other guys that thought they were really smart, which they probably were, were like, it's this way, guys. Seriously, I know a shortcut. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, shit, I lost the group. And then I just wound up finding the Shire. That's a really good point, though. Like, think about that. Like, not you specifically. Like, I understand that you mm. understand and appreciate the joke you're making, but I'm not talking about you. But like, you ever meet someone who's really stupid and like, how did you beat all or like completely athletic and really stupid? And you're like, you beat like four million sperm. Like, how did it happen? How did know. that you, fucking happen? I'd love that you could talk to LeBron James about that. <laughs> no, he would have. I'm surprised he got out too. He should have. No, he's really athletic, but he's dumb. Yeah, that's that's true. That's that. I, I also think he's a terrible basketball player. No, I mean, well, you can't say that. I don't. You think can't that. say he's terrible I think, basketball. I think, player. I think, I think he's great. Oh, I think he's a great b-ball player. I like to play. Player. I like to play a little pickup game with him. Yeah, he would. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually would not. I think. I, well, you know what? To be honest with you, dude, I've heard Michael Jordan's the biggest asshole of all time. That's what I've heard. Right, biggest asshole, greatest basketball player of all time. Definitely. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's got the ring. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you have to become an asshole to be great. What you're good at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. Carry the it two. is true. Yeah, but this is that's a why we're not good about the reproductive system. It's been fun. The, yeah, they're definitely not going to get to monetize. I, I think I, Jim John. I, I I think I figured that out too. Like every time we talk about getting monetized, mon- 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 uh, we do. So like I think that mm-hmm. there's like a sensor inside of the YouTube, like that in finds that and they're like, oh, they're talking about being blah blah blah. blah. Yeah, we're willing so it they, into existence. Yeah, they only good strike thoughts. us down. It's yeah, it's fucking you strike us down and we would become more powerful than you could possibly have. Actually, we'll just be unemployed <laughs> and on, on Rumble. Yeah, we'll be on Rumble with our, with our trucker hats and our, our rebel flags ready to go. Yeehaw! Just hanging out with Alex Jones and like Ben Shapiro and shit. You know what? To be well, honest with you, I, I actually would love to be on Alex Jones' show just to see how wild and crazy it gets because he's got some wild ass takes, dude. They're, they're just so wild, they're, they're funny because there's no way you can like believe it. Like, I think he was one of these, like, turn the freaking frogs gay. I was like, "What? <laughs> you like? What are you talking about?" And he yeah. smokes weed apparently too. So, yeah, that's, sh- that that's the shocker of the year, right yeah. there. That's the that's the complete shocker of the year. Uh, yeah, you know, the funniest thing I ever saw is when Kanye came on his show and started saying shit, and even Alex Jones was like, "Come on, man!" Like if Alex Jones yeah, is the voice of bad. reason, you know you're fucking losing your shit. Yeah, when, you know, Kanye, and then he brought it. I think he brought it. I think that guy that was with him was like a known white nationalist or something. I don't. Mean, I think yeah. he was a, a known white nationalist, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Like I can tell Alex Jones is like mm. <laughs> when Kanye was talking, he was like, uh, 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 yeah, I kind of see what you're saying, <laughs> but no, because not all Jews are bad. And he was like, and then Kanye was like, yeah. it's yay. <laughs> it's yay. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, dude. Alex Jones's fucking face was like five sheets of red. Oh god, it's amazing. Like the, the it's like it's like a it's like a it's like a father seeing their drunk son come home for Thanksgiving and everyone knows they're drunk <laughs> and he's trying to keep it together because he wants to get up and slap him across the face. And but he's embarrassed for him and he's also embarrassed <laughs> while all the family members are gathered around watching this drunk asshole make a fool of himself. Yeah, god, it's like I speak from experience. But he promised his, his wife that he wouldn't he wouldn't fight with his son that day. It's like no, I swear. Yeah, I mean, I won't it, yeah it's kind of like that awkward uh, moment with, between Emilio Estevez and Martin Sheen in uh, the war back home. <laughs> when he comes back from the war, and he's all fucked up. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, speaking of uh, fucked up people sure. and their families, um, my name's Mike. No, uh, Johnny Manziel documentary. The Untold. Un- have you seen this series on Netflix called Untold? Mm-mm. They just basically they interview people who just really fucked up their careers, uh, or, or just are very. When's our show guess, coming up? Yeah, right. Like we're just we're, we're scooting there. We're scooting there. If we could only get more popular, we we, we could definitely make it yep. on that show. Um, but no, they were like Logan Paul was one of them, and like I guess it's not people who fucked his up. his career's like not are, fucked up though. He's doing well. No, because people are stupid. Yeah, they don't care if you're actually a good decent person or not. That's why Chris Brown still has hits. You know, yeah. well, he, Mel Gibson, he, does hits, he does hits outside the album and in the album. He has hits. <laughs> 
<laughs> just, just begging them out every day. Uh, but no, I hear, I, I hear it's a hit with the ladies, if you know what I mean. <laughs> he had a collab with, you know what, I'm going to stop there. Uh, no, dude, that guy, you remember Johnny Manziel, right? Like the the football player? Yeah. So, yeah. His story is fucking crazy, dude. He was just yeah. basically like, like he got so famous over Texas A&M and they made so much money off of him, like hundreds of millions of dollars off of him. And then he made a little bit of money doing autographs, but then he went to the Browns and he was just like, fuck it. I don't actually care. I just wanted to get fucked up. Cause he went and to the dirty buck crack Browns. That was part of it. But I used to you got watch nothing, but you got nothing in Cleveland to do. We get fucked up and avoid gunshots. Yeah. Well, that's why I, th- I, I really, <laughs> I'm kidding. Dude, I, I'm sure Cleveland's a lovely city. Not never, but I mean, maybe yeah. it is one day it will be fuck everyone in Cleveland. Here. When OCP fuck buys you all out, I... they're going to replace the police department and have RoboCop <laughs> on the streets. Now, I know that's Detroit, but it'll happen in Cleveland. At some point. You just wish you could be Chicago. You pieces of shit. Uh, no, I've been to Cleveland once. It, it wasn't great. Wasn't the funnest time I ever had. Cuyahoga Falls is where I went. Don't remember much of that. That was a good concert, though. It was an all-time concert. Blink One Eight Two. I don't even want to. I don't. I don't even like going to Kings Island often because we get so close to Cincinnati. <laughs> yeah. That shit scares me, dude. Like I can hear, I can hear like the, the muffled sounds of screams and bank robberies as I cross the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, don't go that way. Don't ever yeah. go that way. Sometimes dead is better. Yeah, we, we're surrounded by danger. You go the other direction to Eastern Kentucky, and you can literally like just be walking in a park and be like, "Oh my God, I'm now addicted to opium." Yep. You know, you like just, just step on, on a air. step on one of those random syringes to throw out by yes. one of those, get in a fight with a meth head. You know, it's like that scene so, in yeah. Wizard of Oz when they walk through the poppy fields and they all fall down. That's like <laughs> I would say in Eastern Kentucky: you walk too far, you just fall down, you don't know what happened. Yeah, once you cross Nitro, like fucking no, not Nitro, a uh, Harlan, like one of those. Things. There's one place you know you've gone t- too far hazard. when you see the smoke plants. Yeah, Hazard, that's the one. Hazard, you yeah. get to Hazard, you've gone too Ooh. far. It's literally down. the name is actually it's an actual accurate name. Hazard, don't come here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> turn it the fuck. Literally. Yeah, that maybe that was like yeah, that was that was definitely uh, what's the word? Maybe the actual sure. founders were like, we didn't think anybody actually settled this fucking land. We called it Hazard for a reason. <laughs> Holy shit, there's people that live there. It's literally on top of a fucking smoke mine filled with demons. Yeah. Like, oh, it's well, dude, well, we like it. You don't want to go. We like it. <laughs> you don't want to go. I dated at Prestonsburg, too. I dated a girl there. <laughs> Dark times in that place. They have like a Roses department store, a Burger King, and it's inside the gas station. And that's like all the places this entire community has to get jobs, other than I imagine coal mines or what. And it's just about how you would imagine. Like, what they do is they drive up and the sun goes down at like two fucking PM because everybody's up in the hills. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. like everything smells like dog shit. And then like you what they do for fun is they like and not everybody, just in my experience, the people that I saw there. Yeah. Uh much respect to everybody who lives there. I'm sure there's wonderful people. They're but, still good people, yeah, of course. But. Yeah, but I seen people like huffing desk cleaner, you know, that stuff that you spray, like huff desk cleaner, and then be like, Let's drop down the mountain with our lights off at night. That I sounds, know these roads like the back of my head. That Woo! sounds so hot. Just, like, that sounds so yeah. hot. No, I'm like, I, I was just I, trying I to get laid, where, dude. I, I don't know where die. I wound up. That one girl that I dated for like a week that I climbed through the window to get out of her house. Remember that girl? I don't remember her name. The one I, I removed uh, the air conditioner unit to get yeah, out while that. she was sleeping. Yeah. That girl, dude, I don't know where in the fuck she said, like, she gave me directions. And I, I do, I saw, I never seen, like, I saw chickens crossing the road. I saw cows just walking around without a fence around them. I saw all sorts of fucking animal. I, I saw like all sorts of like farm shit. And I was driving, and I was like, this cannot be the right spot. But sure enough, pushed way back yonder, beyond the hills, there was these two broken-down-ass trailers. And I was like, holy fuck, that's got to be you. And then she's like, hey, welcome. And, of course, there's nothing wrong with living in a trailer or anything, but these motherfuckers were not, like, clean. These were, like, like on hoarder shit. Like, this was, like, crack central shit. And I was like, mm-hmm. fuck, dude, I can't. I don't know. And I walked in, and as soon as I walked in, there was, like, there, there was, like, on the side of the house, the doors were missing. And I was like, oh, fuck. I, lost, I, lost I walked in and I smelled pee and poop. And it was like a mixture of, of there was like kids running around with no shirts on. And they were running like little babies and stuff. Like you see on cops, like you see like kids with no, no, <laughs> no like clothes on. They're just running around. You smell it. You could smell like shit and cat piss and dog shit. And it's just all intermingled. You felt skank. Like you felt like you were like you were initiated and like put into a skank gang. And then I was like, I'm a skank now. That's just what I am. the last time I was inviting you over for dinner. Huh? Oh, yeah. This is the way you're going to talk about my house. It's the last time. You know, it was Mike's second house. (laughs) Mike's rich. (laughs) Uh, But no, it was, uh, but I was in a, uh, yeah, I felt like as I crossed the threshold, I became a skank and I was like, this is my life now. I'm a skank. (laughs) That is skank. That's skank. A skank right there, man. (laughs) Fuck you. I mean, I'm a skank, man. You know what we do? We we take the goddamn doors off in the summer. We don't have no central air. 
and that way we keep the yeah. house cool at night. <laughs> See, and, sure. Yeah, we don't do that. Oh my god, it was so fucking awful, dude. That was one of the worst experiences. It felt like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like it literally yeah. felt like those people when they pulled up to that house. That's what they don't tell you, man. They don't tell you the reason like so many people have great stories. It comes from just trying to get butt. Like that's all it is. Like once it's like it's not that life settles down really or, or anything. Like when people get in serious relationships or get married or whatever, it's like people put themselves selves in such peril situations just to, for the hope of maybe getting some butt and it might not even be butt you don't even really want like in your position like i'm not even sure if i want this butt. i wanted but it I and can't. then I, I realized i didn't want i don't want it no more i don't want your life is what i wanted to tell her <laughs> yeah you will do that if you were single and trying to men and women if you're single and trying to get some you will do the stupidest shit You'll walk into dark alleys while a ghost face is on the loose just like hey maybe this hobo will suck my dick uh you will yeah. it's crazy yeah, but the girl they, it, like meet me in a trash can. Okay, I'll be on my way. Uh, <laughs> dude, I, dude, I've got oh my god, dude! I remember all this one time. I was by myself. Mike didn't go. I was at a bar, and I got hammered. I was fucking drunk, dude. And I wound up going home with these fucking people. I just met there. I just met them, and there was like three girls, and there was like two guys, and I didn't know who they were. And they're like, "Come on, old mate." Yeah, because I, I like I was bored and I was drunk, and I went over to, like start partying with them because I had nobody to party with. And then they were like, "We're gonna go back to my house, man. You won't go." They're like, fuck yeah, yeah. And I went, dude, and it's like, and, and like, it was so surreal. Like, you know that you get to a point when you like, I'm sitting around and I don't know these fucking people at all. I'm sitting in their fucking apartment and their doors open with the screen locked and they're all sitting there and he pulled out Coke. One guy had cocaine and he was like, man, I know you cool, man. You ain't going to say nothing or nothing. I was like, no, man, I'm not going to say shit. But it just like something struck me in my fucking head right there. I was like, where the fuck am I? What the fuck is going on? Like, it was like, <laughs> you got this, over real no, fast. I was like, yeah, no, yeah. But I was like, how the fuck did I get here in my life? Like, this is a random part of the book. Like, it doesn't even make sense. It was like someone put it on a sticky note and put it inside the chapter of my life. And I'm in a weird, like, this was like a, a fucking, like, deleted scene. Like, it wasn't supposed <laughs> to be in the movie. And so I, that's when I got up and I was like, I got to go to the bathroom. And they're like, hey, I'll go on back here. I was like, well, I got to go to my car real far and get my, my charger because my phone's dying. And then I got the fuck out. I drove not drunk. I was sober by that point. And I was on coke. So I was all hyped up. <laughs> That's a key component. And that was you a key get component. Very like, that just very fucking, yeah, like I was like uh, uh, the guy from Wolf of Wall Street when he hits that coke and he comes <laughs> right out of that shit. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I've been in some of the stupidest situations of my life, just like trying to chase after some tail. I there's fucking this is not because of that, but one time I remember I used to uh pick up this girl. It was right after high school. I used to pick her up all the time. I was it was one of the few times in my life uh, I haven't I've been smart enough to stay out of it mo for the most part, but one or two times we all find ourselves in what's called the friend zone. Uh, and it's not the end zone. It's the opposite. One or of the two. End zone. Damn, dude, I set a record back in high school. Well, post high school. <laughs> I'll say post high school. Yeah, that was it. before. I, yeah, that, all bets were off at high school. But yeah, I used to pick this girl up. I thought she was the coolest fucking chick. I used to pick her up every day, drive all the way fucking down to Lex to pick her up. My, I'm so old. I didn't have a CD player in my car. I just had a, a tape and I just recorded Green Day's Dookie on it. Just listen to that you, over and you over. Because you could get the, we had those tapes that you had the adapter and you could plug it into yes. the CD player. I, that was badass. Yes. I like those things. I, did, I didn't have one at that point. Maybe I had one beforehand and I lost it. I don't know. Uh, it was a dark time in my life, but I would pick her up every day and we'd go hang out. And I'm like, oh, one day I'm going to tell her how I feel. And then one day I pick her up. And she's like, let's go to this party where all these, dudes that i think are hotter at i was like oh oh okay, okay we'll, we'll go there and then we get there and she's like it was fucking off dudes dudes ever it was just like i could feel like i was not supposed to be oh, there yeah. Oh, yeah. so she's yeah, like and i was pissed i was like mad like i was like this is this is my life this sucks shit and then all of a sudden this dude came up and he was like you guys want to buy some acid? And I was like, I've never done acid before. It's pretty scary. <laughs> so you should you should have been like my Michael Sarah's like, no way, man. No way, man. <laughs> no, way. <laughs> no way, man. 20 minutes later, someone's drinking a Capri Sun out of my butt. But no, I, I took it. It's like, it's in a sugar cube. It's in a sugar cube. It's like 10 bucks. And I was like, fuck it. You know what? Whatever. I'm about to bounce out of here because I'm not yeah. going to sit and watch her make out with this dude or whatever. And she's not even talking to me. And I don't know anybody here. And I've been played like a fucking fiddle. So I bought it. <laughs> At least you didn't do the most cringy. I just thought of those cringiest fucking thing you could have done to <laughs> <laughs> what if you had gone out to the car with your shitty tape player? I don't know why you would have this tape, but you'd have popped it in, or maybe it was on the radio, and it was like, he's like she's like, what? He's like, I just want you to listen to this song, okay? And it was like, show me the meaning of being. <laughs> do you guys remember when you used to do that shit? You'd be like, if you just listen to this song, this is how I feel about you. Just listen to the song. It's I, yeah. so fucking cringy. I know because I've done it before. Oh, I've done it a thousand times. Yeah. My maybe not that song, but yeah, other song. I'm like, yeah, no, I mean, pay attention to this yeah. part here. 
Uh, but no, I, I I took it. I went home to my parents' house. Again, this is right after I graduated. So I was like 17. I went home to my parents' house and I was like, fuck it. This sucks. My life sucks. I was like, I so I chewed up the, the sugar cube and I sat there and I was like, here it comes. Here we fucking go. And this is just me and my parents <laughs> in my parents' EMT. living room. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be, it's gonna happen. I turn on fire. I was like, I'm gonna get some cartoons going in here. I'm about to trip balls. I'd never even done mushrooms at this point, uh, which those are way funner. But like, I I never done any psychedelics, so I'm just like, I turn on Rin and Stimpy, right? Oh, and I fucking the worst sat. Decision. I got me some cereal. Fucking just a loser, a friend zone fucking dork sitting in his under. You sound like fucking Puck from the Real World. <laughs> <laughs> I was just watching Rin and Stimpy, and I'm like waiting for it to kick in and hours and hours and i was like oh here we go oh shit oh no that was just this hours and fucking it was like four and a half hours later i went i finally realized that not only did these guys take my girl but they duped me at ten dollars and gave me just the sugar for cube. a sugar cube fucking idiot <laughs> Without, you know, i wouldn't have done it. i, I, was I like, would Fuck! at least you did that though man uh I've never been that fucked up. I've never been that depressed or fucked up to take acid or mushrooms or anything like that. I can't even do fucking weed because it makes me paranoid. I feel like goddamn John Nash from A Beautiful Mind. Like I start <laughs> seeing shit and thinking I see people and they're talking yeah. to me. He's like, go ahead, John. Just bash your head in. He's like, you can't see him. He's my best <laughs> friend from college because you live yeah. alone. But no, I'm way I, too anxiety I, fueled to try it now. I, I never would do that shit. I couldn't. I was no fucking way I'd do that. I don't care oh, dude, how I, I, mean, I have to be on like Jose Cuervo and I can't even do liquor. And I would still I not do it. Yeah, I've done mushrooms twice and I had a blast. But that was when I was young and I did not give a fuck. I've had I've had some mushrooms that somebody gave me in my house for like nine months now, almost a year. And I just I'm like I'm not I'm never gonna fucking I'm too scared now. I'm, I'm not gonna unlock some deep seated fucking history of yeah, my dude, life. Gonna and like, I'm just gonna, gonna like be break like Kevin Bacon in that movie where he sees ghosts afterwards. Yeah, exactly. What was that movie? Stir of Echoes. Yeah. 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 That, that, that's just going to ruin my entire life. It's going to, it's going to re emerge my anxiety, and I'm just never going to be the same again. So, no, you I won't. Put them, you I, know what? Maybe, sure they went bad. Why don't you put them on pizza and eat it? Maybe it'd be better. No, I'm not worried about the taste of it. I'm worried about what the fuck I'm is going to, like, my mind. No, I know, is, but like, maybe that'll ease your mind. Shit. Like, it's just some mushrooms on some pizza, man. It's not even anything. It's just mushrooms on pizza. I think shits with chocolate once. That shit was gross. That's fucking, I mean, they don't taste good nasty. at all. It's shit. It's like fungi. You know, it doesn't taste good. Yeah, it is poop. Yeah, I bet. Dude, I, I'm what not... if somebody? I wonder if a guy. I wonder if a human being can grow mushrooms out of his own poop. I should have. Oh, we should have. Like Matt Damon should have explored that in the Mars movie. I guarantee. Oh, no, he tried. used shit to grow potatoes. So if you can grow yeah. potatoes out of turds, I bet you could grow <laughs> mushrooms out of turds too. If you could dodge a wrench. You could dodge a ball. <laughs> yeah, if it bleeds, we could kill it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but what are we doing? Are we supposed to be talking about movies or something? I don't, I don't know. know. I feel like I feel like uh, we. I feel like right now we're on mushrooms. Like we, we didn't know <laughs> that it didn't yeah. hit, but it actually hit. Yeah. By the way, we're all gonna die. Uh, just kidding. that's true. By the way, we are all gonna die. Yeah, I don't know happens. if you guys know that or if you've heard that. But let's see what you guys have to say. Uh, we missed you guys. By the way, it's been a minute since we streamed. We love you, and we want to take you all into our bunk sexually tonight. But starting with, well, I don't want to start with someone with the name that you have. Um, I will start reading the chats of Child of the Corn. Child He's a child who lives in a cornfield and there's no way related to the movie. He says, yo, Mike, as a Nebraska native, Amon Green was a Husker legend. Amon Green was fucking good, dude. I remember uh, that. Since you became a Green Bay fan, would you say he's on your offensive Mount Rushmore or not quite? Thoughts and uh, prayers, Jay. Much love always. Hey, Go thanks, on. man. Uh, well, Mike was a Titans fan for a long time. No, so. you fucking piece <laughs> of shit. <laughs> no, he gets mad Titans. about that. He, no, you, you know what? I don't know. You know what? You guys... Hey, if you guys are new here, like, or you just kind of tune in casually, join our Patreon. I'm gay. Streams. Yeah, and we could talk about dick sucking all the day, all all the live long day on mm. the Patreon stream. But join the Patreon stream, and then maybe Michael tell you that story because we don't want to get too far along about why he gets mad about the the, the uh, Tennessee Titans when they're brought. I see up. what you did there. <clears throat> Always play with their minds, Jay. Yeah, just give them, you know, just dangle a little carrot and be like, yeah. Come on, come on inside. I like it. Come on inside. Yeah, that's that's good stuff. That's really good stuff. I, yeah. I, I, I you know, how is. By the way, how is porn free? We'll also talk about that because I have deep seated thoughts. Why is porn? How is porn free? You shut how your is fucking free? ungrateful mouth, dude. No, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Yeah. Like, don't question it. Just do. Um, yeah. But anyways, uh, it didn't used that, to be free. No, no, it was not free. We we no, when the internet first started, you had to like go on like some shady ass shit to even get to have like five seconds. A lot of credit card info was given out. Yeah. 
in the early days of the internet. And I, and I'm pretty sure I uh, cyber sexed someone. And then after Dude. I came, they were like, oh, by the way, I'm a 57 year old black guy named Bubba. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I knew you were a woman. It. It's like, well, jokes on you. I knew you were. And I loved every minute of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I definitely, I, I definitely RP sexed or, or cyber sex RP sex. I was, I was a role player back in the day. Uh, on on the RPF, dial up, like and role I, play fuck. Yeah, no, dude, I was playing superhero. We were there was like a role play superhero community. And I was role playing <laughs> superheroes, and then yeah, fucking and nerd. Then, yeah, fuck yeah, dude. But I got nerd sex, and it was good. It was good <laughs> sex. Uh, I had cyber sex all the fucking time, dude. And I was only fourteen, and I and I like I remember yeah, one time, dude. I remember one time, like I had been signed into that account for years, and I was over eighteen then. I got my old password. I sent back in, and this girl that I used to cyber sex all the fuck. She was so, so such a dirty slut. It was so good, dirty. She, she grabbed so her dirty. Chin, I was like, like a bag of sand. It's like you little minx, you. She like <laughs> she's like, oh my god, is that JT? Because that's what I went by in there. And I'm like, yeah, hey. And then it, it, we were talking back and forth. And she's like, I haven't seen you in years. And I was like, yeah, it's been a minute. And she's like, do you remember what we used to do back in the day? I was like, yeah. I was like, I was only 14. And she's like, you were, you were only 14. And she was in her <laughs> fucking dude. She was in her early 30s. <laughs> that's fair. <very good laughs> I was awesome. like, you fucking. Creep. Oh my god. We could find her and put her in jail if we want. No, dude, I did it with multiple. I, I, I mean, they were probably dudes too. They're probably all dudes, but I did it yeah. with multiple people. Like that, that was just a fucking. People RP back in them days were just cyber sex. Yeah, you literally just went to a chat room, and this motherfucker asked about Amon Green. We're like, <laughs> you just went to a chat room. The Amon Green was in those like, chat rooms. <laughs> yeah, he probably was. You were like age, sex, location. Like, are you hot? Like, describe yourself to me. Like, That's yeah, like they, they describe themselves, and you'd be like. Yeah, and they'd be like, "All right, so what are you gonna do to me next?" And you're like, "Oh man, that, I think that's what fucked up our whole generation, dude." That you gave us cyber sex. We didn't care who was on the other side of the screen. We're all worried about AI and shit now. Back then, we were just like, we were probably talking to people in prison. Jared Fogel no, probably you know, having a fucking heyday no, with all of us. I think Kids. it made us tougher because you know what it made us do? It made us appreciate the real shit when we got the real shit. We were also programmed because we got to. We didn't get to touch physically, but we we knew what to do. Because if we didn't know what to do, then it was typed for you by the other person that might have been experienced. The show, you know, like yeah. dude, listen, somebody would RP Gambit like from X Men, and then he would be like fucking rogue. It happened all the time, dude. And you'd see that shit, and and you'd see it. And then I remember this one guy that I was RP, like he was like the leader of our group or clan or whatever, and he was like, dude, because you know I just don't get it. Like we're trying to RP a group here, and everyone's just off like making out and having sex and stuff. <laughs> He got mad. He got mad about it because he got it was into a Elon Musk. He got into a fight with story. his online girlfriend. He was fucking mad about that. I was like, Lou. His name was Lou. <laughs> was like, I was like, I was like, Lou, calm down, man. Because his girlfriend in the in in real life, I think, or maybe I know it was his internet girlfriend, but she played a character opposite him, and they would RP a romance. Was Candy, <clears throat> and then he had a bastard fucking friend named Ryan. And that would come on, fucking Ryan. Ryan would come in there and type up, like, what's going on? Why is, why is JG in here for? Like, fucking bitch. I was like, I was here when you left. <laughs> I didn't know. I, I knew that you used to, like, do that RPG superhero shit. Yeah. But I didn't know it was so Dude, sexual. There was levels nature. to it. Dude, I got an award for it. Like, they gave out fucking personal <laughs> awards. I got a fucking award, dude. Like, I, I played Quasar, which you guys don't know who that is, but he's a superhero. And there's a movie might come out about him later on, but his name's Quasar. And I got an award for Quasar, dude. I played Wendell Vaughn. That was his name. His real name. His real name was Wendell Vaughn. I played Quasar. I also played U.S. Agent. I played U.S. Agent, dude. I dude, it was fun, dude. Because when you do the RP, you had to like back in those days, you had to describe your entrance. So like, I would like ride in on a motorcycle if I was U.S. Agent because he can't fly, and I was like bursting through the door, the the tire screeching to a halt. You had to describe your guy, and you get off that. Dude, it was fun. It's fun. I bought comic books related to the characters I was playing, so I could research them. <laughs> Motherfucker, you put more work into that than you do the fucking YouTube channel. <laughs> I know, but I was interested then. <laughs> oh, shit. That's hey, we hilarious. can start RP stream. We'll do that shit. I'll fucking hey, do it. I, now that I know what gets you off, do you ever catch yourself just like reading a comic book and you get horny and you don't know why and just brings back memories? Yeah. <laughs> you know what's weird about me, dude? I get weird boners when I play video games. Like for no reason. Anyway. Like, I'll, I'll be playing Matt. Yeah, I know, but like specifically, I'll be playing Madden. And I won't be like, you know, playing against it or just be like playing a season or whatever. Like for some reason, like I'll score a touchdown. For some reason, I'll be like, man, I got the juices flowing me right now. I'm feeling, I'm feeling fucking, I'm feeling pretty hot to trot right now. And I'm like, what's wrong with me? Like, where does that come from? Is it like an endorphin release that like accidentally yep. like takes a wrong turn yep. down Horny Town? Yep. You get into Horny so Town, you make weird. a left onto the gooch and you go all the way to the orgasm. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I man. just said that on the internet. 
You know, that's fine. Have you ever heard like, how many fucked up things you say in front of people that you don't know and hundreds of people? And you're like, oh, I just told people like I got I get weird horny at times. And it's, I don't yeah, know, that's like, crazy. You don't think about it. I'll tell that's you something out there I didn't think now. about. Dude, last night I literally watched seven hours, seven fucking hours, dude. And I didn't get bored once of a guy playing GTA role play. Wow, and all I did that's... was sit on a fucking bench. He sits on a fucking bench and he role plays. And and is dude, I, I was like, I, I watched the whole fucking thing. Wait, wait. He sits on a bench as okay, as so there. The I would do. It got me. I wanted to play a role play. I wanted to do GTA uh, GTA RP, but there's no server on Xbox. I can't do it. It's only on PC. But this guy, he's called the bench guy, and all he does is sit on a fucking bench. That's all he fucking does. He just sits on a bench, and he's like mean to everybody. And it isn't anybody talking to him, but the action comes to him because everyone else role plays and shit. It's crazy. I was like, I, I never That's got fucking bored, actually. dude. It was really, really cool. cool. Dude, that guy was like art, art like people are the, people are like he was streaming it and he was like yeah. talking obviously but he was like talking out of character but in character he was like my character doesn't like you got, anybody you got some beer in your stash there a little spittle what Thanks, it was, it, yeah it's it a great reminds, party it reminds me of steven <laughs> uh, but, i mean that's like, genius though yeah that's no, that, really, Gump. That, was, that but that's what people in his chat or his stream was saying like this is like modern art this man has discovered modern art he just sits on a fucking bench in front of a burger joint in a role playing server on GTA and the action he watches there so many crazy things happen around him that's crazy dude that's a, that's so genius like i i mean I, I i don't know what to make of you spending that much of your time watching it personally i was jealous but, i didn't come up with it i like to role play i, I could have done I, that I, I think it's a fascinating idea like cuz you can pl so that's what you do in GTA online like you just play in the game and a bunch of people just run around like no. like sleeping with prostitutes and stealing yeah, cars you, and shit and just hanging out so apparently there's a role play server that you join on GTA and it's only on PC but when you join it, you got to literally fill out an application and get accepted onto the server oh so and it's they, like Truman show but shit. it's like but you got to stay cuz they'll kick you from the server unless you do you follow the guidelines you got to pick a fucking job you got to be either got you can be a cop you, you can be a criminal mute. you can be a did you just go mute for me or did you go mute for everybody cuz i can't hear you what can anyone hear jay am i, I mute nothing. hang on i think it's me oh Damn, I was just getting. It's just me. I'm just getting wound up into it. Well, I'll wait till you mute on here. Hang on. I think <clears> my <throat> chat stopped, so I wonder if something's going on because nobody's talking in the chat now either. I think we maybe we lost it. Fuck shit. Oh. No, okay, they can hear you. You're good. It's me. <clears throat> you, okay, thank going. God. Figure it out. Thank God. <laughs> no. Okay, so the way that GTA RP works. On the, on the servers and I, like again I, I just discovered this last night i was looking it up because i was like you know what i got pumped about it. i wanted to do it i was like man i want to do it i don't have a pc to run the specs for gta but i was like oh is there one on xbox there's not one on xbox unfortunately but the way it works is you fill out an application and if they accept you on the rp server then you have to do it like you, you like have to do a job like you have to like you can do like whatever you want but you have to maintain role play so like a lot of people will go out and they want to be a cop so they'll go be a cop or they'll be like a criminal, but you got to work your way up to being a criminal because you got to stay in character. Or some people be like tow truck drivers. They got like people that, you know, own businesses. You got the mayor, the judges. You got crazy shit you can do. You can do literally anything, but you got to make sure you stay in role play. And if you just like walk up to a random person and fucking kill them, like for no reason whatsoever that makes sense for a role play, they'll kick you. So you got to have a reason for doing it. You know, you can't brandish your firearm because you might have the cops roll up on you. It's crazy. Like the amount of detail that is involved in the role play GTA server. I'm like, it's no wonder that that game is that old and it's still popular today. So yeah, I was like, totally like, I was like, man, I would totally absolutely do this. I would absolutely RP. And I would definitely do like, a, a, like I, I would do like a, a fucking street cop and work my way, way up to detective and shit. Like I, I would play it like Alex Murphy from RoboCop or, and, and, and do, I, I watch those police videos all the time. <clears throat> on on the tube of use i watch those all the time like uh police uh police activity uh code blue uh i've got so i've got so many subscriptions to so many different body cam uh police stuff that i watch i would totally do that but it would be fun they even have maybe you can even join the fbi the fbi you can join the fbi if you want it's crazy how many roles that you can play but that guy i was watching he's just the bench guy 
That's all he does. He like does observational like uh, RP. And, and he's a grumpy asshole. He doesn't want to be bothered. So if someone approaches him in the game, he says, fuck off. I don't want to talk to you. At 8.57 this morning, I activated myself. Roger Thorn Dorn. <laughs> I can now hear you and feel you. Mm. And also, fuck you. Not yeah. fuck you, but I would. That's so if, funny. Uh, all these people weren't watching. How that RP works, though, man. I swear. Like, I mean, and that's what I was telling them. I don't know if you heard me. That's why that GTA game has survived this long. And that's why it's still one of the most popular games played today. Well, I think you should do it. And I think you should record it. No, because I, I mean, I, no, because they're getting ready to come out with GTA 6. Oh, is there a new GTA coming out? Coming out? I yeah, I, mean, I don't thing. know. Maybe, maybe next year. Fucking Monday, Tuesday. By the way, I, I look, I just want you guys to all know something. No one fucking contacts me on, on like Tuesday uh, because Madden comes out. I paid the oh, extra yeah, $30 right. to get it early because I'm a fucking you whore. piece of shit. I know. My wife's not going to be happy <laughs> at all. Hey, hey, guess what, honey? We can't take our daughter to get her medical checkup because I spent $30 early. <laughs> <laughs> That's good shit right there. Because man. mommy Buckle. went slubbing one night back in college. <laughs> yeah. Oh, to to answer your question, child of the core, that we never fucking got to. I, I apologize. Uh, I wouldn't put him on my <laughs> Packers like all time offensive running back Packers. Absolutely, with well, Willie Henderson, who was technically a fullback. Ryan Grant, but I'm on Green. Maybe you could argue is top three, definitely best Packers running backs of all time. Plus, that dude loves fucking Batman. He was always obsessed with Batman, which I always appreciated. Packers don't have a great history recently of awesome running backs. You had Eddie Lacy. Uh, anyways, I'm going too, way too deep to your Fucking question. Fucking nerds. Part. Jesus Christ. Talking about people being nerds. Holy <laughs> hey, fuck. why don't you go sit on a park bench? I will, by talk the way, because it'll be more goddamn observational fucking art than talking about some <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> Does, did april did april see you like sitting there watching just no, this dude yeah, on no, a park I, bench no, no i did dude. i was so embarrassed i, I waited till she was asleep all, all the way and then i started watching her <laughs> and then you when don't she want her to dry up no, like no, the and, fucking then when, Sahara. When, and, then when, and then when she woke up i would like get out of it real quick and act like i was watching like a man video like working out and shit like i don't know like how you get like abs <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. But to, to be fair, like other than just sexual stuff, back in the day, I did some I did some super nerdy shit too. Like in the early internet chat boards days, I traded sports cards online with people in chat rooms, and mm-hmm. I also did uh, simulation oh, yeah. NBA Live, which was crazy because what you oh, would do this that was RP. That's this is the same thing as RP. Right. Only you wouldn't like role play. Like I wouldn't like talk to people. Like, but like what you would do is this guy would start a a, a full league simulation in the NBA live oh, game. And then like yeah. you would pick a team and like you would draft your team and then you would trade with the other players and then he'd run through the simulation and oh. you had your record and then ah. people would win championships. So that was That's smarter. Awesome. I thought well, that was like early fantasy league football. Yeah, basically. There actually it was weird in the RP community, there was a thing called simming. And in simming, you just sim the character, so you didn't roll dice. Like when you RP, you had to roll dice when you attack. Like you fight, you yeah. fight other characters, and you had to roll <clears throat> like Dungeons and Dragons. You had to roll dice, but in simming, you didn't have to. You just described your attack, and then you went from there. <laughs> that's so fucking wild, dude. I can't do. I have too much. Like not not that it should be embarrassing, but that's why I won't I act. Know. My imagination ran wild. <laughs> I was a part that's, of a never-ending story. <laughs> that's, that's, that's why I won't act, dude. Like we've had offers to be in like fan films. I won't do it. I feel too. I get too embarrassed. Like I can't pretend. And the same thing in bed in the bedroom. If I'm yeah. real fucking fucked up and drunk, you know, yeah. and a girl starts talking dirty, I, I'll do it back. But like sober or like with like a stranger or whatever, like someone's like, yeah, do it to be big daddy. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. No, oh, don't, yeah, we don't. Yeah, I love pretending though, because my life sucks sometimes. <laughs> so I can't nothing, pretend. nothing better than pretending to be somebody else for five minutes. Was like, give it to me, Papa. Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't talk dirty bad. I'm one of those that doesn't do it. Uh Crease Fold, speaking of which, sorry that you had to come on during that conversation. But do you talk dirty in bed? Also, hey, Mike, hey Jay went camping last night. Bear ran through sight while nodding off in tent. Sounded oh. like the bald headed killer bear of Claire. damn County. dude that's that's crazy did you take did, were you one of those guys that when you when you heard it though you were like this <laughs> and you're like i can't because i'm too scared i mean that's but it, it's kind of cool though but it's like it's fucking scary thank god it wasn't on cocaine yeah, dude like are you sure it wasn't just ezra miller with a shaved head yeah, that yeah, just... well you know you could give it away if you heard pill bottles going off in one pocket and beer bottles in the other <laughs> like in a uh, uh, yeah. warriors like not nah, yeah. nah, tommy i heard chuck, chuck. Chuck, chuck. 
<laughs> Come on, Tom. You sound like a goddamn Morocco when you walk through the front door. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm glad you're safe, man. That shit's scary. Yeah. I've seen that movie Backcountry where that bear like comes in their tent and just fucks them up, and it made me never want to camp again. Honestly, yeah. not even like in Halo. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we used to nobody, do. You get called out for that shit in Halo. You, that's, like, that's dangerous camp in Halo 3 and Halo Reach. I had a no camper. Fun. You get all sorts of fucking... Dude, I swear we missed the boat on that. We should have started streaming like Halo Reach days. Because holy mm -hmm. shit, those combos and those fights you'd get into with people that would send you and spam you messages over and over if they accuse you of camping, that yeah. was the best ever, dude. It was, it, was, it was fucking content, man. It was free fucking content. Well, I, you sound like you sound like Jack Black in uh, Orange County. He's like, I got these fucking ideas, man. I'm gonna make these t-shirts. It's like smiley coach, faces on them. I got cocaine in my Mountain Dew. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, speaking of which, Friday, next Friday, this Friday, carry the two, next Friday on the 18th, I think, uh, Texas Chainsaw Master I know. Game comes out. I would socks. love to finally figure out how to play fucking game. By the way, I was thinking since we didn't get to do the Patreon stream last month, and we're trying to think of something to make up for it. If, if we can figure it out um, how to do it technology wise. I'm going to work on that a little bit this week. I think that it would be super fun to play that game with some of our Patreon members and have like a stream or something on there, mm -hmm. test it out on the Patreon a little bit, feel around, you know, jerk you off a little bit, touch the tip. Dude, uh, that so, it looks fun. so much fun. I'm excited. That would be fucking dope. Mm -hmm. We just got to make sure we can do it technological wise and we will fucking we'll contact awesome. Elon Musk and uh, put our butts together and see what kind of juices that we got running out. Yeah. Get on over here, <clears> big daddy. <throat> Luke Weber says, what's up, fellas? Happy Sunday from down under. You're not down there, Luke. Uh, <laughs> hey, are you in? Like, put it in. Like, I am. in. I was, oh, I knew you it were there. hurts me. Uh, <clears throat> Jay looks like he drives a bright pink Mini Cooper and looks sexy while driving it. You need to stop watching me when I pull up my driveway, Luke. <laughs> you you know you'd fucking rock a mini cube. I, pink's too much pink's too pink well i mean it much. depends on what color pink is i mean you can have like different shades of pink that look pretty fucking awesome i mean it doesn't have yeah. to be barbie pink i love I mean, it could be pink. like metallic pink or some shit like that no pink, i think metallic pink is too like there's something about metallic pink that just like it, it like you look like a, a weeb or something you look like like a person that really jacks off the anime. I don't know. Like, what's a weeble? It's like like weebles a weebo wobble, is like, don't yeah, fall it's like down. A fucking, it's like a, it's like those people that get like really attached, to like the anime girls and shit, and they like to watch. You know, it's yeah, yeah. I don't want to do that. I could see you cruising in a in candy a, a color down a fucking. candy color mini coop. Yeah. Jay, I remember one, one time Jay was like looking for cars and he was trying to figure out which car to buy. And I was like, check out like this Jeep or whatever. He's like, no, dude, no, dude. He's like, I don't want, he's on, I don't know why this stuck with me. You're like, no, I don't want something that's that. Uh, what would you say? Uh, what aggressive. was the fucking word? Yeah, I don't want something that aggressive. <laughs> it, I, don't know know why I, said that. I don't know why I said that for it. It's I actually, think I, was so to, I know, but I think I was trying to be smarter than I was. I was like, I don't want something that aggressive. <laughs> it's, it's actually like the smartest thing I, like it blew my mind because i was like oh shit because you drove that little that little tiny uh silver the neon neon yeah. i think most dudes are like oh man i'm gonna give me a fucking loud ass mustang yeah. yeah right or or like i'm gonna get a big truck or whatever this or that and like they think that's gonna impress women but jay was onto something <laughs> yeah. i think like yeah. no actually you get something non-assuming get something nice sleek affordable compact you know it says i'm not gonna date rape you you know what i mean well, it's, it's also it's it, way more yeah you know, well and it also avoids the 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 uh the thing when you pull to a red light and someone revs their fucking engine at you I'm like you want to race pussy or yeah. whatever and it's like no one's gonna race a dodge it's not gonna happen <laughs> they might look over and they're gonna look over and see me with a collar shirt on and i'm blasting backstreet boys uh backstreet's back out the fucking goddamn windows and they're like that man is special leave him alone and they'll drive on now there were souped up uh neons and I, I, like there was a like a very brief moment in my life where i was like oh everybody's getting these turbo shits and they're getting these turbo charged like it was fucking power rangers rpm or some shit like that and i'm like and then i thought about it and i was like why, why the fuck would i drop that much money into a goddamn 2000 dodge neon to put some nitrous in that bitch like i'm in fucking fast and furious with a literally it was a standard four-cylinder dodge neon it wasn't a turbo or anything like that but i remember we were driving we, we in that particular time frame of our life is like oh did you hear that shit he goes that's the turbo i'm like <laughs> <laughs> gives a shit like now yeah. like now it's like everybody's so impressed with it the, the 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 key story here ladies and gentlemen is know who you are have self-awareness like like there was like when we were in like high school growing up it was like man i gotta get the nos i gotta get the speakers it's like all these personality traits that aren't even you you're just like this is cool because bob has one in science class the only uh, one i ever wanted was the uh the dot the uh the eclipse that paul walker had yeah, with the underglow, the my, green underglow. My, 
my sister had a fucking talon, like a dodge. I don't it know. It looks dodge like him, yeah. or eagle talon. They look just talon. like them. Yeah. But they fucking she she was redneck as shit, still is, uh, allegedly. But like had she had she, the fucking seat covers were cow. Like not like cool, like suede, like oh. or like you know what I mean? But literally like fluffy cow seat covers that she bought at Walmart and had like 12s in the back. And then she traded cars with my mom. So then we had to drive this tiny fucking eclipse talon to like West Virginia to see family members. And like every song you turned on was like it's like you and your mom in a fucking car with cow seats and like a little fucking fast and furious car. And every song and there was a boom, boom, boom. And I was the most embarrassing fucking What trip the hell the rhinestone life. cowboy shit is that? <laughs> like a rhinestone <laughs> cow. But I was fucking the other night. And like, you know how you put it on a playlist? Like mm. uh, to drown out the noise, especially if you have I, a very smart. Oh, I don't have kids, so I don't ever um, do a playlist. But you know, right? I yeah. like silence. I like silence. I don't like any talking. I don't like any fucking dirty talk. I don't like nothing. Okay, it's like it's like you're coming in for a fucking loan, and and, and we're gonna have a business <laughs> meeting, and when when it's over, we will see if you're approved for a mortgage. <laughs> like it is very serious business, and it's very much it, it's a very much uh, serious situation. Uh, we go from step one. We do this. Uh, you came in here. You do step one. Thank you for filling up the paperwork and waiting in the lobby. Uh, now we're going to move on to step two. I'm going to allow you to lay on top of me, and then we're going to go from there. And step three is me doing what I have to do, and then you will remove yourself from me and not talk to me for five minutes, and then I will go and have a cigarette and then come back and talk with you. If she needs a break, you go over to the water cooler, and you get her one of those snow cone-shaped waters. Like here, Here's a no, nice No, she's drinking she that while we're doing it. That's included. <laughs> just, just, it's not even spilling. Like, no, that's included. And they're, and again, like, they're, you're just so, you're hitting it so softly. It's not even spilling. Yeah, and it's like, like I was like, by the way, I don't do the kiss on the lips things. Don't kiss me on the lips. I don't want you to kiss me on the lips, <laughs> and we don't make eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. Oh, I mean, it sounds like a fucking prison sex, but you know, it's just like I. It's a it's a function of the human body that must be done. Or you go crazy. So it's like eating or drinking uh, water. So you have to do it. So do you wear rubber gloves? It might as well. But I mean, you make it, her wash your it hands. It's a first. part of the human cycle, and it must be done, and we must get through it. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus, fuck! I'm gonna die. I'm not gonna make it through this whole fucking stream. Uh, no, I was. Do you ever? So you never. In all seriousness, no. You never listen to music. No, I never have. I, think I know that was 100%. No, because what happens is my, my but... concentration leaves where I'm at. I'm currently here. And then my <laughs> concentration starts wandering to the song. And I'm like, what's that song? And then I hear it. It's like, well, it was like fucking Top Gun or something. I was like, and then I just want to like rock out to him. I'm like, what am I doing here inside this <laughs> vagina? I should be inside of a cockpit of a fucking airplane flying around stopping bad guys. And I'm here in a vagina. I mean, that feels good and nice too, but we got to figure out what we're going wrong. And then also... And then if it's a corny ass song like "Take My Breath Away," I know I'm using Top Gun twice now, but if it's "Take My Breath Away," I just feel all like cringy, and then I just well, my boner's just going down. We talked about this in a stream before where where we we were having sex and put on Top Gun to drown out the noise, uh, yeah. which is probably where your, why your brain went directly to that. Not Jay and I, my wife and I, but well, like uh, then, she was not. Mike, impressed. Well, me and Mike do it Slipknot. But <laughs> <laughs> we 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 rock paper scissors for who's yeah, gonna. It's, it's, the, no it's like an Empire Records when they pick the M and M, and then like the person with the right colored M and M gets to play the song. Mm -hmm. But no, um, we were. Doing, she was very not pleased with me for sharing that story. By the way, um, about the okay. Top Gun thing the other day. But I will say this: we were, we were doing it the other day, and like I always put on music because like the little sounds. I don't like the little sounds, like the this the ripping and the tearing. You know the. No. You know, you like, like that little... sound. Some people get off of that sound. No, I don't like the sounds very much. Like, so I, I like to have some stuff. But the problem is, you ever you ever been doing it though, and like you accidentally catch yourself like doing it to the music, and like the chorus kicks in, and you start doing it fast, and you're like, oh, this is embarrassing. Now I feel like I'm that's doing why performative never do art. It. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I, I catch myself, and I'll just like stop. And, like, am I um, having sex or fucking putting on a play at Broadway? What am I doing? Right, here? right. But yeah. so what happened was, and I swear to God, nighttime. We'll get to your and all of your comments. It's just a moment. I don't know what's wrong with us. Nighttime tonight. while we're talking. Nighttime's uh, profile pic is probably the chat and their actual look right now while we're talking. Did <laughs> <laughs> you please stop talking about your? No, it's for like, two what? Uh, I came here for movie talk, but no, this came on. Um, hang on, let's take off. Like so, it, it, I was gonna imagine say, doing it and doing it and doing it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> but just imagine um, that you are mid stroke, you know, not stroke, mid pump or whatever. Like you're yeah. you're in mid it pump, now. Yeah. You're in it. Like two, three songs to play. Just kidding. No one ever lasts longer than three songs. <laughs> but yeah, the second song <clears throat> comes on, and it's this. 
just just try to go here in your brain. Don't get us, don't get us DMCA. I'm just gonna do it short, like, but this comes on. Oh. You'll be a woman. Oh, that's awful, dude. That's awful right there. Oh my god. That's I mean, I can literally like that when I hear that, like the what would what the mental image that would conjure up in my brain as I was having sex is like not Uma Thurman. It would be like walking into a cantina and smelling old beer and cigarette smoke. <laughs> And like an unpaid fucking bill that sitting at the, it, it wouldn't remind me of sex. Yeah, thankfully it would throw I, me off completely. It'd be like listening to Mister Rogers' opening. Yeah, well, thankfully, like it just finished right when that song clipped on. Like it just, it was right then, and then I heard it, and I, I love that fucking song. So I knew as soon as the, I was like, oh fuck! Yeah, I like ran song. to the bathroom, and like smacked the, but it's like, smacked but it's, the Alexa. I was like, Alexa, off. Yeah, but there, but there are certain songs for certain situations. That's like the fucking song from uh, Requiem for a Dream coming on in mid-fuck. And you're like, oh, God, it's, what if this is our last fuck ever? <laughs> it just doesn't work. The worst thing that can happen is like a terrible song comes on in the middle of your play. I got to start making like a sex playlist, actually. That's really what yeah, I Yeah, just do. do a sex playlist. Yeah, that's what yeah, you should do. Smart. Like, do something like Marvin Gaye or like... The Starbucks like, sampler. Yeah, whatever, Sean, yeah. But don't do like, you'll be... You'll be <laughs> You imagine you fuck up and you put Bobby Brown on our own. <laughs> <laughs> but the proton backs on the backs and they split. Forgot about, about Vigo, the what? master it's eagle. Forgot about him, my boys. It's not legal. And then you get into it like, oh. Ow! Well, I guess we're gonna have to come inside. We got, we got, we got. We got. <laughs> Maybe maybe we should do that. Like that sounds like the best sex of all time. I don't know, dude. Like, I don't know. I don't know, wife. Now I feel like watching Ghostbusters after that. I just ecto slimed you. <laughs> That's what's gonna get us DC and May slapped or whatever. Nighttime says, you know, a stunt man also died on the set of the crew. Way to bring the mood down, Nightman. Jesus Christ, dude. We're just talking about good that. times. No, it's like, no you know, idea. people well, die. I mean, oh, here's nighttime. I wonder. Just kidding, was dude. <laughs> was yeah, is it was where was Alec Baldwin when this happened? <laughs> where was Alec Baldwin when this happened? I'm just asking a question. <laughs> no i don't know I, that sucks man yeah, yeah, yeah uh, maybe the maybe the crow well you know no one else uh i mean brandon lee was the only lead he was the lead actor that that uh sadly passed away but they made several other crow movies after that no one had any tragedies i didn't hurt. realize they even did a tv series yeah they did it sucked i bet that was fucking awful was it edward yeah. furlong as well no shit he was too busy fucking freeing lobsters at, at red lobster <laughs> was that edward furlong or yeah, it was, was edward guy? furlong oh, okay. no i think it was him <laughs> Uh, Bat Seal says, Hey guys, can Slender Man and Marky Mark give me some advice on dating? I like this girl, but uh, a lot got a lot going on and don't know if I do like her. Oh, well, that's a that's a big fucking I don't know, <laughs> I don't know uh, what that means. You mean you don't know if she likes you? I don't, I wait a minute. Give me some, I didn't, I like this girl, but got a lot going on and I don't know if I do like her. Is this a fucking trick question or some shit? What the fucking goddamn fortune cookie bullshit is this? Yeah, it makes you I, think, and I don't like it. This is Riddler. It's not even that bat seal. I see through it now. It's actually the Riddler. <laughs> let's just assume. <laughs> let's just let's let's assume that um, that what you meant was I, I like this girl. Um, okay, no, no, maybe, maybe he's maybe. in the middle. Maybe it's in the middle. That yeah, they are mean. dating. They're currently dating, and he's oh, got a lot, right. he doesn't know if he really. Oh, her. I guess because he's got oh, he's okay. busy. He's busy. Okay, so we have and that. Episode. In that instance, um, um, you know, I know how it is, Bat Seal. You gotta get up in the morning. You gotta eat your fucking turkey burgers. You gotta, you gotta work out. You gotta hit the bow flex. You gotta hit it fucking hard. You got a movie coming up. You got all these things going on. All these things going. Maybe I'm gay. Maybe I like guys. Maybe I like fucking guys. I like guys. Well. I like fuck guys sometimes for movie roles. For movie roles for the fighter, I fucked Christian Bale twice. <clears throat> That's a true story. I went saw Mamby, saw Mamby. I put it in his mouth. I put it in his butt. Head body, head body. That's how that's, you do it. That's th that. <laughs> Well, that's so much information that we'll just share right now. Thank you so much, Mark, Mark Wahlberg. Um, so let me tell you something back for you. Uh, you you've been dating this girl for a little bit, and you got a lot going on. You laugh, you like, well, you know, me know that Jimmy John's the devil, but me like Subway Sandwich, so we might get a job at Subway Sandwich. But Jimmy John might offer me more money because it is compulsion. So here's a question for you: When you look into her face. When you say, oh, hey, you doing, darling? She looked back. She said, hey, you doing? Do you feel the butterfly in your stomach? If you do not, then get rid of her to go on with you live. Don't torture that poor girl. Go have a subway sandwich. <laughs> but if you feel them butterflies just floating around, stick it out there, bat field, and see what happened for you. 
And just one more thing I want to add to that. Take her on a roller coaster, finger on a fucking roller coaster. All right? Finger on a Ferris wheel, finger on a roller coaster. And and if, if she doesn't if she doesn't want to let you finger on a roller coaster, then you tell her I, I break up with you and you forever hold your peace. You know, you make sure you make sure that's done with permission. Well, the police officers may be involved that's in you important. Learn. That's very that's important. A, <clears throat> very important to learn. Those are big facts. I gotta go pee though, but I I'll, I'll okay. wait till I'll wait till the one hour mark. I'll wait till so we can get one hour exactly. Uh, okay, and then after we pee, we are going to do two things. Um, we're gonna start you off with a little uh, Starbucks sampler. <laughs> an appetizer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like you guys have been waiting at Applebee's all this time because it's so popular. It's the neighborhood yeah. hangout. You just yeah. now got a seat. Just to start with one finger on the top. We're not even going to put yeah. it in yet. We're just going to, you know, just just a little smooth it around there. How many people you know? have we lost though? Once it gets wise? nice and nice and Juicy. moist, yeah, yeah. Uh, might go in a little bit. Um, you know, I'm going to stop. Um, I'm giving away my secrets. Uh, no, there's still there's three over 300 people here for some. Oh, good. Reason. Wow. So, okay. Then yeah. you guys are really all excited right. to get into Applebee's tonight, and we're happy to have you. Hey, fucking thank, all right. You know, that's what you gotta do, man. Listen, if Applebee's want to get back in the fucking show business, if they want to get in the showtime, they gotta like extend like why they're tape like you like. Hey, we got an hour away. Like what? There's nobody in the parking. Like just because you don't see anybody in the parking lot, don't mean there are people not in there. Yeah, and, like we got fucking celebrities that flew in here just to come to this Applebee's. Yeah, Applebee's. Like, what? It's like place. yeah, that's right. It's the neighborhood bar. Uh, what the fuck am I? Eon McGrath. I don't think we ever <laughs> seen you in here, Eon McGrath. <laughs> You the, way, the way you say it, you are the guy. It sounds like you like, uh, just he sounded like he just surprised you with the prison shower. <laughs> I, deal with you. I felt your leader. <laughs> uh Mike and Jay, your opinion. What is Freddie's worst line in each of the L like you want us to go through God every damn, of- Eon, That's like fucking bringing God it home damn. quick. You're like, hey, why don't you spend the rest of the fucking stream talking about that? Because I don't give a shit. That's literally a whole fucking video, dude. Pop that's quiz, a great idea, shot. though. I love it though. That's a great <laughs> idea. I'd love to do that. I'm just going to say the entirety of Freddy's dead. <laughs> just get rid of the well, whole fucking thing. I, yeah, the, one of the worst ones I can't remember. Yeah, that's a really bad one from Freddy's dead. That's a fucking awful one. And she's like, she kisses him. She's like, happy Father's Day or whatever. And he's like, good. I'm like, oh, fuck. It's like, and then I watched the legend die. Uh, but yeah, it's, it, uh, yeah, you might be right. It might just be all of Freddy's dead, but there were some really bad ones in Freddy's Freddy five too. That's a good one for the chat for you guys in the, in the chat. What does everybody say? Your least favorite Freddy line? Cause there's some good ones. Tito Sancho says now he's playing with power. <laughs> and, oh yeah. Uh, that's another one. That's a, that, yeah, that's a Freddy six. I do love Frank Rambo though. <laughs> he just, I don't know why it makes me laugh. He just goes, Applebee's has rats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. That's just why, like, that's why they're the number one. And that's why they haven't got closed yet. <laughs> they have rats and they're still fucking surviving. Mike ate 25 cent wings from them one night and he didn't die. I did. No, I did. I, I survived that shit. That was the night I was supposed to go on the Smoke's No podcast. <laughs> and Ben Affleck got named Batman. Don't you get mad about like, it. You got bumped, dude. <laughs> ben Affleck got named Batman. They're like, we don't want you on the show. Nope. We don't have time for you. What you there after Ben Affleck got named Batman? Well, we're still back around, goddammit. Take a back seat. <laughs> oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, just kidding. No, they're, those guys are doing well. I know, they're so. good. I know. Uh, Adrian Yabara. Thanks, buddy. Says Hulk Hogan, the goat, just turned seventy. Hey, he, uh, no, I, he had weird. He had a bad personal life. He's still uh, in the ring. Wrestling, in the ring. keep it in the ring. Um, which two wrestlers do y'all consider most overrated and underrated? I'd go Ric Flair and Roman Reigns as overrated. Oh fuck yep. yeah, Roman Reigns so overrated. Roman nice Reigns guy. Overrated. Great story. Uh, not as a wrestler, doesn't do it. Superman punch. What the fuck is that garbage? It's um, called no imagination because he didn't role play on dial up internet. <laughs> Randy Savage, and that's true, by the way. And Chris Jericho as underrated, hundred fucking percent. Yeah, dude, overrated. Uh, I, I mean, Ric Flair had some legendary matches, though. Like that's the thing about him, though. I would, I definitely agree with you with Roman Reigns. Ric Flair, I don't know if he's overrated because not only was he a great wrestler technically, he was also a really good uh, 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 person on the mic. He could come up with shit and do great promos and really got people's asses in the seats. He was an amazing heel bad guy i would say who's actually overrated and i know people are gonna hate me for this i'm just gonna go ahead and say it the right i think brett i think brett hart was fucking overrated dude i think he's a i think he's a crybaby i think he whines a lot i think what happened to him sucks with Shawn michaels but i also think he thinks he's literally the god of wrestling and that without him wrestling couldn't have evolved to where it is right now again i'm not taking anything from his skill set and what he's able and what and the matches that he had but literally dude that guy thinks he is wrestling brett hart does I don't believe that at all. And I used to like Bret Hart back in the day, dude. But Bret Hart to me was a mid-tier wrestler. 
I'm sorry, he was. I mean, he just never, to me, he never got to that level. And maybe there's a reason why McMahon didn't put him over. I mean, he did for a little bit. The reason why he wasn't like, in his mind, what he should have been was because he wasn't that good. But anyway, uh, as far as underrated, I agree with you, uh, Randy Savage. 1,000 fucking percent Randy Savage. But you didn't put him on here, dude. You didn't put Rick Rude. Rick Rude was one of the best fucking bad guys of all time. He had one of the best shimmies with the fucking, like, <laughs> and like mm, looking good. And he, like, all the people, like, all them fat cows in the, in the audience and shit, dude. And, like, he he, br he brought the heat in a way that – and he was also an amazing wrestler, just an amazing wrestler overall. had legendary matches as well. It, like, to me, it's Randy Savage and Rick Rude. That's a, that's a good fucking answer, dude. I, I, I there's, I, I really you'd have to go back and there's so many wrestlers to look at for sure. I will say overrated. It's gotta be Roman Reigns. I just, I have never seen in my life, uh, the WWE or WWF or WCW just hang on a wrestler and make everything about them over and over. And his storylines to me are so boring that you will acknowledge me. Cause I'm the hell of the time. God <laughs> dying me. Yeah. Uh, that, and the Superman punch, like one of the worst finishing moves ever. I know people disagree with me on this. So, but, uh, underrated, I would say, uh, my favorite wrestler of all time is DDP, so obviously I'd say underrated. But I will say both The Fiend got fucking dicked. How do you have a character like The Fiend yeah. <clears> and then just fire him? Like, literally let him go. That could have been great. He could have been the next Mankind. It could have been fucking – nobody's going to be McFoley. But, like, character-wise. And then I, I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to throw it out there. The Raven. Fucking Raven was badass. I don't dude. know, man. He was pretty – The DDT I mean, was, was pretty sweet. No, he had a great he had a great finisher, but man, I don't know. I, I heard that guy was a fuck up really bad. Oh, was he? I don't know the backstory. I just remember he looked cool as fuck. Well, no, it might it's either him or Saturn. One of the two were really bad fuck ups. Saturn might have been one of them too. Yeah, I just remember he looked cool <clears> as fuck, and it was right when Sting was popular. I know it was popular, I, well, so I loved his get up. I know what everybody's emo. gonna say though. They're gonna say Ultimate Warrior was overrated, and he might have been because he was all company, he was all company uh cookie crisp. Like he was literally created by Vince McMahon. He didn't really have to work for what he had. Like all the other guys, that's why they all pretty much hated him. Like he Who? was brought in, Ultimate Warrior. He was brought in like oh, he was this big, yeah. built guy, good-looking guy, and he had the war paint on. And Vince McMahon literally thought him up in like side of a marketing bubble and put him out to the fans. And then he all yeah. of a sudden takes on Hulk Hogan, gorilla presses him, and then wins both belts, the Intercontinental title and the heavyweight title. And they're like, he didn't earn it. A lot of the fucking guys in the back, I know uh, there was multiple fucking guys in the back that said he was a terrible wrestler he had, was so ungrateful and he didn't deserve the belt and it was so weird that i found out later he was a tag team partner back to sting back in the day sting and him were tag team partners that's wild and then sting but sting went the other way and then he went that way but anyhow now i have to go uh pee pee from the wiener hole i'll be back enjoy it okay. enjoy it we're all gonna think about you holding your cock while fluid comes out of it i am at least you guys can do whatever you want to do i don't judge and that's what I'm thinking about right now. He's almost there. He's almost to the bathroom. Just close your eyes and imagine it. He's probably opening the bed. It's right across the hall. He's opening the door right now. There's the door. I think I heard it. He's going to open the bathroom door now. And right about now, he's probably pulling it out. Probably feeling that warm flesh. In his I'm going to stop. Hey, Austin says, I know y'all are big BVS supporters, but you got to admit the villains were terrible. Doomsday was nerfed, and Lex Luthor would have been more competently played by Gilbert Gottfried. Uh, you know, I think that this. Um, fuck you. Fuck you. You came in here. Fuck you. No, I agree uh, with that sentiment. I loved... Let me put it this way. Doomsday is one of my favorite fucking villains of all time. Just completely gnarly and unstoppable. And I think that that should have been three fucking movies in itself. The death of Superman should have just been its own goddamn thing. Like much less Batman and all the other shit we're trying to do there. And I love fucking BVS, but that should have been its own movie. That being said, it still was some of the coolest parts of the movie, man. When fucking Superman flies up and like he gets re he's like zombie Superman, he gets recharged. And the way that he just puts a hole in Superman's chest as it's not what it should have been. Definitely didn't get the time that it should have been. But I still think that character was so badass. It was still amazing to see. Uh, I just think it didn't get fleshed out enough for sure. And yeah, I don't think anybody's ever been like, actually, you know what? Fucking the social network kids. Pretty great. Goddamn Lex Luthor. I will say this. Gene Hackman, one of the greatest actors of all time. Also terrible Lex Luthor. Like he was great for that movie and his role was great. But as supposed to be Lex Luthor, awful, fucking awful. I don't think we've ever had an appropriate Lex Luthor in cinema. Kevin Spacey would have been perfect, but they did all that weird shit with that. So we don't even want to go there. But yeah, um, 
the Lex Luthor I like is the one from the comic books and from the animated shows where he's like, he's trying to be the ultimate human being. He's not some jokey fucking, he's not some little tiny nerd. And granted that was supposed to be his son, but he's also not like, you know, looks like he, he sells fucking real estate, you know, like he did with Gene Hackman. He's trying to be the ultimate human being. He's gigantic. He's ripped, but he's still just a human being. This dude is walking on a treadmill while benching and like also doing all the smart shit. Cause he's just obsessed with self-perfection and he knows he'll never be Superman, which is why he hates him. So I don't think we've ever gotten a good, good one. Uh, honestly, like a lot of Superman's villains have just been dicks. Even Michael Shannon, like you tell me Michael Shannon's going to play Zod. I think, it's going to be so much better than that. And I love fucking Man of Steel and I love BVS, but Michael Shannon as Zod, they could have fucking tapped into so much of that. There was just too much going on. I don't think we've ever had really great uh, Superman villains on screen. Michael Parton playing the fuck out of Texas, Texas fucking Texas Chainsaw Massacre this weekend. I got a little fucking vein going on there. neck on that one. That felt nice. I'm going to have a heart attack now. Um, yeah, dude, it sucks. It's fucking terrible timing for me because I'm going to be in a hole you're not going to see me for like three days. I'm in the top 500 Madden players at the time. Matt playing Madden on Tuesday. I'm going fucking hard. It's going to be awesome. It's it's intense. I get serious about it. I do. I'm like, I want to fucking be the best. I want to compete. And I fucking love Madden. So I hate that they're coming out at the same time, but I really do want to do something with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I really hope we figure that out this time. We always say we're going to, and then we fucking fuck it up because we fucking suck shit and by the way guys after we get done taking our breaks i swear to god we are going to get into the topic of the show which is we have both we're going to rank all the looks of the unmasked jason Voorheeses, and we're also going to talk about our top five horror movie directors of all time so we are still doing both of those things faux show and by the way just so you guys know you can get on game pass if you have xbox game pass you can play texas chainsaw massacre for free technically as well so hopefully we'll figure that out and do some cool shit nighttime crazy shift how barbie and super mario bros breezed past 1 billion while the disney and super films like flash and ant-man struggle to make 300 million look man you can fucking like a spade's a spade dude like you go and you watch fucking ant-man it's the same shit they've been fucking shoveling they got lazy and they got a ton of money and they got a billion fucking people working on these movies, but they're just slopping shit at this point. They're, they're doing it with their eyes closed. It's almost like this channel. Like they don't even have to think about it anymore. Put in any effort. <laughs> I'm kidding. I swear to fucking God. Don't, don't anybody laugh at that fucking joke. Don't. Hey, I fucking see you, Greg. Stop laughing at that joke. That's not funny. It's not realistic at all. It was total fucking fiction. But uh, yeah, dude, superhero fatigue is fucking real. Superhero fatigue is real as my wife's orgasms joe valentine says my son bryson is a biscuit boy and loves you guys says y'all are funny and he's watching live with us and asked if he can get a slender man shout out much love joe i will get that right to fucking right to jay i shouldn't cuss because it's your you know what he's here right that's cool though uh but yeah i will have jay do that for you right when he gets back jacob an amazing fucking bass player who has an amazing fucking band. Thank you, dude. Really appreciate that. Says, yo, dudes, just got around watching Shoot Fighter 2 a couple days ago. I don't know what that is. Not as good as the first, but still cool regardless to see Bolo and Johnny Lawrence team up. Oh, that's fucking crazy, dude. Bolo's the goddamn shit, you guys. Uh, you, uh, they are both on YouTube in decent quality. Love you guys. Uh, oh, yeah, no, we talked about Shoot Fighter. It sounds like something you, like, like a fight fuck. Like, we're going to have sex and fuck. It's shoot Fighter. like. I'm going to fight you, and then I'm going to fuck you, and then I'm going to shoot. Shoot fighter. Fight and fuck. Sounds like Alcatraz. Sounds uh, like the reason Jay and I can't hang out together anymore. Fight and fuck. Yeah, that's what happens. We just Dude, end up fighting and then fucking, and then everyone's confused. I was, down, I was talking to April, and she was like, I was telling her about the RP thing on GTA, and I was like, she's like, why can't you just play it, and then you can just go kill somebody and take their cause like because it's role play there's consequences for what happened you can't just go kill somebody it's not you, and she's like it's called role play not real play i was like it's called role play for a reason god if people understood the concept of it just don't hey, let's all just it. let's all just say a prayer right now for jay's dick rest in peace it's never it's never going to touch a woman again she no, just okay, dried up I faster than that. the sahara I desert i lied i didn't say that out loud i said it in my head <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, I was just testing you. Actually, I was, I was lifting weights. Like, oh, that's all geek shit. I don't need any geek <laughs> shit. I was lifting weights. That shit never happened. Never happened. I know. Uh, I know. All right, you gonna go pee? 
Yeah, uh, we are at, by the way, 7.27 p.m. and what is it? Uh, 7.27 p.m. Oh. Uh, Joe Valentine had a request. Uh, and by the way, hey, I, I should have said Joe. Uh, tell tell your biscuit boy that we really appreciate it. That's fucking cool you guys do that together. Uh, but uh, Joe Valentine asked, he said, my son Bryson is a biscuit boy and loves us and says we're funny and he's watching live with us right now and oh. asked if he can get a slender man shout out for bryson and then right after that i answered jacob right after and then yeah. it's on to you the next uh, roll okay. it down scoot scoot hello blasting thank you for watching the show we hope you're having a good time uh you got a cool father uh in joe valentine in me like him name and your name is blasting valentine you sound like good father from the old west blasting valentine that's right beware Thank you so much, Blaston. Uh, and and then thanks, man. I really appreciate that, Joe. Uh, then he said he answered Jacob. Okay, so we're after Jacob. Okay, we're gonna go through. Gonna go through. Scroll. Iron Samurai. That's a badass name, dude. Holy shit, it's cool. Hey, Mike and Jay, have you all guys read the TMNT, the Last Ronin comics? If y'all haven't, y'all guys should check them out. They're badass. But if y'all have read them, would you love? Would love? Would you love to see it made into a movie or animation like The Dark Knight Returns? I gotta say, Iron Samurai, Samurai, that's thank you so much. By the way, you're fucking awesome. You're legend. But I, that was such a wrong sentence. I like. I felt like I was having a stroke reading it because it felt like. But I could feel your excitement because you're just like you gotta get it out. I have not read the last Ronin comic books. I'm pretty sure Mike hasn't because he doesn't know how to read. But he might have if he did. But I know what it's about, the last Ronin, um, and it sounded amazing. The actual idea of what the last Ronin is, if you guys don't know, is the other turtles are dead. And Michelangelo is the only surviving member, and he um, he uses the weapons of his fallen brothers to um, dish out revenge in a way. Uh, but I would love for them to do something like that. I don't think it would ever get made into a movie at all. Um, I feel like an animation would work really, really well for The Last Ronin, and I would love to see it, especially if they treated it, uh, you know, as the serious subject matter that it is, um, um, much like they did with The Dark Knight Returns animated uh movie so yeah i would love to see i think it would be great uh it's going through it's going through jerry ramey uh it comes in because i came in on foo what <laughs> uh would you really my katie would kill me hope she i don't know what this is jerry i'm gonna i'm gonna hold you up here thank you so much jerry that's really awesome and, and thank you for uh for the dono there and i will 739 i'll let mike answer that jerry because i that's not for me uh orlando g sup dude sup orlando badass name too orlando g sounds fucking awesome i would definitely buy real estate from you if you sold it william mcleod good name too solid name thank you dude i really appreciate you iron baron that's a cool name too you sound like a fucking sidekick to fucking dr doom and i do appreciate that 7 30 okay so, uh sup mike and jay what video games in your opinion would make for excellent film or tv series adaptations i think max Payne, hitman gears of war all three are excellent choice all three uh didn't they do a mac well max Payne and hitman i think were both made into films that weren't really accepted or loved at all they were pretty much skid marks on the underpants of hollywood uh even though i didn't personally enjoy hitman i, th I think tom tim theolifa was a pretty good hitman um gears of war would definitely work gears of war actually directed by i i feel like gears of war directed by someone like james cameron and in the style of something like aliens would be fucking amazing phenomenally cool because there's three of them right so you could do a trilogy out of it it'd be really cool um but as far as other video games i think that would make really awesome uh adaptations um if they ever do it right and again it would be one of those things that you would have to get someone like peter jackson who did he was working on the production on halo i think halo if done right and and given the actual time of day and 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 the budget i think halo back in the day it could have been the next star wars it was so popular and so massive dude, if it had just been given the the um right amount of love and attention from these big studios i think it would have been a, a banger of a movie or, or a series uh the other ones um yeah uh re we've never really got I, resident evil i mean i you know i've never seen a true adaptation or a good one of resident evil that's another one and i'm sure there's a few others i'm just not thinking off the top of my off the top of my head but thank you iron baron a really good question um mike's gonna say something like madden i was like it's fucking football season every year but that's anyway brandon jackson thank you dude he says do you uh do you think a storyline for ethel and junior from friday the 13th part five would have been a good spinoff for a tv series uh no 
Uh, I think it would have been funny. I think that you could have done uh, a, a, like a spinoff thing, like a prequel, like how they got to the state that they were in. I mean, it's pretty obvious, like why they were in the state uh, they were in. But I mean, maybe a prequel, like, you know, do like an hour show on Netflix or something like that, you know, like and then uh, release the movie. I don't think a, a spin -off, I don't think anybody would give a fuck about them that much i think they were really fun in small doses and i think they had just enough screen time to be memorable but if you stretch that out too long i mean it's like stretching out your welcome with any girl it's like all right you bore the fuck out of me get out get out of my face so yeah i don't think they would work as a as an actual spinoff for a tv series but i mean good suggestion though um <clears throat> michael parton says i still love having wet dreams about the three of us hopefully maybe someday it'll happen yes i've had those multiple times it's always been good. Uh, even dream catchers can't keep those away, Michael. So, yes. But thank you, Michael. Yes, one day, one day, one day. Uh, Brandon Ferguson. Sup, guys? If you guys need help with setting up the stream for Texas Chainsaw, I got y'all, man. We definitely going to need help. I mean, we are like fucking, uh, we're like Nell from that movie with Liam Neeson. You remember Nell? Which, uh, I think it was Jodie Foster. Take me away with the wind. <laughs> That's how we are with fucking uh, technology, dude. Like we're just like not there at all on on, the, on those kind of like as far as like gaming streaming or anything like that game streaming I'm not like gaming streaming see how much of a boomer I am they still use that word I guess they do but yeah uh, definitely Brandon we will definitely hit you up on that but Austin says thank you so much as well said would you rather be doing it or <laughs> my brain is so fucking warped and disgusting he said would you rather be doing it to the Jurassic Park thing oh you were talking about that you're disgusting Austin. Would you rather be doing it to the Jurassic Park theme or Blade techno music? It's got to be the Jurassic Park theme because once you come, then it actually feels like the gates opened and then you've entered into the promised land. Like you're going to, you're seeing things that you've never seen before in a way that you've never seen it before. Like, you know, when the gates open up in Jurassic Park, in Blade, it's it, it just, it's very like, it, it would make you come faster because it, it makes you feel rushed. Because it's like, the, you know, it's like, it's just, it's just too fast. It's way too fast. I'm too fast too. Sometimes it's a problem. Oh, uh, you need to go to seven thirty nine. Uh, Jerry Ramey had specific for you. Oh, now some fun for me. Um, Jerry Ramey, I came in on fuck you. <laughs> would you really, Mike? Kate would kill me. I hope she'd be quick and merciful. Probably slow, torturous. Yeah. Uh, you know, I like to give my love to the masses, and my life, my wife appreciates that. Um, mm. so basically I just have sex with everyone I can. Oh, he meant F you. I was, I thought he said foo. I was like, what the fuck is foo? Oh, no, it's good practice. And she likes when I try to get better, um, at it. That's a lie. I'm lying about all mm. these things. We're not swingers. We don't have the upside down pineapples. I swear to God, but I, I would Jerry, if I could, I would oh. you dashing young man. That sounded weird. I, I apologize. Should have <clears> said young. Be he's, careful. He's Someone age, call Chris Hansen on this piece of shit. <laughs> Why don't you have a seat? Why don't you have a seat? Um, okay, let's get into the fucking list. By yeah, the way. finally. I was telling, I, um, this is literally, I was thinking that, like, this is like when you sign up for Hulu, and you're like, oh shit, I have access to all these great programs. And then you try to click on one, it's like $84.99. And you're like, what the fuck? I thought I got Hulu for free. And now I got to sign up for $84.99 while Mike fucking puts things in his mouth that's I'm slightly eating. more congealed than cum. I'm eating peanut butter. <laughs> I forgot to eat dinner. <laughs> my lord dude of all the things you can shove in your fucking mouth on a stream other than a dick peanut butter is the worst this is awful dude i apologize everybody you should nobody want to see that shit in the way you talk god damn I'm sorry it's like your first day I'm in sorry. prison <laughs> <laughs> come on in come on put this all peanut right. butter in my mouth well i guess really? we should do the top five horror directors first you want to do that one first okay we'll yeah. do that one first um by the way i didn't mean what i said about april drying up because you play video games I didn't mean that. I think I think dudes I who play video games are hot, and their girlfriends think they're hot too, and their I wives. I don't care. I don't care if she does or not. Whatever. I still have my role playing friends. <laughs> I can go back in time. I don't care. They're I just waiting. Care. You don't fucking dry up. I mean, fucking become a Sahara <laughs> desert. Fuck it. Fuck They're you. Just waiting for me to come. Fuck back you. I got RP friends. What you got? A dry <laughs> vagina. <laughs> That's all you have left uh, of a marriage. I'll live inside uh, okay. the fantasy world. Fuck it. <laughs> Um, okay. All right. Top five horror directors. Now, mm. this is fucking, this sucks. This sucked to make. I did yeah. not like doing this, dude. This is fucking bad. It does not make you feel good rough. about yourself. Um, and it starts the work, the top four, I feel like were easy. Did you experience this as well? The four top four were easy. The fifth one's a fucking nightmare. No, not the, the fourth and fifth one got me. 
Both both got you, Pat. Yep. All right. Well, you start. What's your what's your fifth what's your fifth well, best? Well, and I know right? it's gonna seem fucking low, and people are like, "God damn, Jay! I just thought you were drinking beer, not goddamn crack cocaine mixed with your beer, you stupid <laughs> motherfucker with a ducktail hair." Uh, but it's gonna be Sam Raimi. Uh, is my number five is Sam Raimi, and, and I really did fight. Um, I okay, and I'll just be honest with you. Sam Raimi was going to be out of it, and I was gonna put uh, Toby Hooper, but I didn't. Um, because the reason why, dude, Sam Raimi is responsible for giving us fucking Ash Williams, dude. Like, holy shit. An evil dad, drag me to hell. He's, I mean, and I mean, I know he's not horror, but Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2, holy fuck, dude. That guy's an accomplished ass director. And he's able to be versatile enough to live inside of horror and do very well in that genre. But then jump ship and do something like in the superhero action movies like Spider-Man. It's Sam fucking Raimi, dude. And you gotta think of how he evolved. The fact that he had no money and he was with his high school fucking friends and evil dad and he evolved that shit. And, and he finally, you know, and it got, went all the way to um, Ash versus Evil Dead on stars. And yeah, I don't know. I get it. I fucking get it. And we'll we'll talk about that as we go forward. That's I can't wait to see who your four is now. Uh, my, my five is going to be Hitchcock. And this sounds like a fucking, you know, this, this. I didn't like. Look, I'm not a fucking a sellout. I, I don't know a lot about Hitchcock. All right, I don't. I don't. This was this was why this one was so tough for me. I can't say who was in the running for five because that would give away the rest of my list for sure. But there was a ton of people, and like for me, I just think that like I can't not put him in there. Like I can't mm -hmm. not because it was like you know fuck, obviously Psycho, and a lot of his stuff does border on like thriller and stuff like that too. But like Psycho, The Birds, fucking Vertigo, Rear yeah. Window. There's there's thriller stuff in that, but like. I feel like early horror, he was one of the only ones doing it. You know what I mean? And like, it's such a, you, I, I just, I could not not put him in there. So I'm not very happy about this pick. I'm not super confident because I don't know a lot about Hitchcock. I'm not trying to sound like smart or like studied because I'm not clearly, but I had to fucking do it. It was like a, it was like a status thing for him to yeah. be in there, I guess I should say. <clears throat> it's like, if you're trying to name your, your favorite fucking um, Western Cowboys, even though I'm not a fan of, uh, John Wayne, you'd have to maybe possibly include him, even though I don't even fucking, I've never seen any movie with him in it really at all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's just, it's just like that. Like, don't question me. Don't question me about my fucking <laughs> like, knowledge. You know, that's like, that's like, that's called a, that's called a titty sucker answer. That's like, yeah. Mike knew what the teacher expected and he answered it the right way. A hundred percent. That's exactly how I yeah, I was going to do that too. Then I was like, you know what? I'm not, I was like, yeah. fuck it. I don't care if the internet hates me. We'll have a you're, good old goddamn time. Let's have a better good bowl. You're a better man than me. I couldn't fucking do it. I was like, I, I, I gotta fucking do it. I get, uh, I get well, it. my number four is gonna be James Wan. Oh, James yeah. fucking Wan. And I'm gonna tell you why, guys. Listen, I know people are like, well, he's kind of he's kind of new-ish. I mean, he's on the scene. He's like a new hot shot. He's a crack shot at the detective agency, but he's a hot <laughs> shot. The reason why I'm putting James Wan there, if you gotta you gotta remember, dude, James Wan gave us Saul, he gave us Insidious, and he gave us the conjuring. Regardless of what you feel about The Conjuring, that's like a major, major thing for a, a director, especially a, a up and comer director like James Wan. That's like going against all these like phenomenal, legendary directors to bring something new and fresh to the genre of horror. And I think he did it in his own way, especially with Insidious and Soul. Those movies themselves have become such a staple in horror that you couldn't even imagine really horror without them. Um, and Conjuring, yeah, people have disagreements. I think The Conjuring 1 is one of the scariest fucking best movies he's ever done. It's not only just scary, it's also got a great storyline wrapped up in it. And that's a good thing. What he does really well is he actually makes you give a shit about the fucking characters. And then the horror is more like secondary. It's there. It's like it's like oppressive. But it's not just immediate like jump scare, jump scare, jump scare, jump scare. He's like telling a great story at the same time. So it's James Wan. Which they lost along the way, by the way. Yeah, I mean, he, I know, he yeah, had... definitely, yeah, he's definitely got lost. He he has jump scares in his movies for sure. That's a part of it. But like they, I feel like they bastardized it in the sequels, and they like they made it all jump scares and no weight. Yeah. Like, and I'll just go ahead and say it. I don't have James Wan on my list. He's no. one I considered for five. I did, but the thing is, for me, I love Insidious. I, you know me, I don't like Conjuring. I, I've just I've watched that movie ten goddamn times, Jay, and I cannot fucking. It just does not do it for me. I feel like I've seen it a hundred times. I wish to God I could feel about the Conjuring the way other people feel about the Conjuring. Well, I wish to God I could give my wife an orgasm. What? <laughs> Fuck. I mean, yeah, you're you're wrong, you asshole. <laughs> wish in one hand, jerk off alone in the bathroom with the other. Um, yeah, disappoint women with the other, but for sure, yeah, I, I get it. And a lot of people said that. Uh, when I put it on Twitter, a lot of people said James Wan. I just don't like, I mean, I, I love Insidious. I really do. But I think he, for me, he needs like another new one. Like he needs like one more. 
because uh, you got conjuring insidious he did do zed silence which is you know that's whatever but and then finally uh well, what's the what's the one i'm missing here conjuring insidious Saul and, and Saul. Saul. Saul's yeah Saul's fucking huge so yeah. in a way you could argue he's just like wes craven in that like this dude <clears throat> starts fucking franchises he has know, pillars of horror yeah I just don't find any of those as popular as they are now. I just feel like over the test of time and the history of horror, they're not going to hold up like a scream or nightmare. Does. We don't know. Cause there's like, they're still making Saul movies. Yeah. And I'm not disagreeing with you. I think a lot of people will agree with you. I'm just saying why I didn't do it yeah. uh, because I'm just a piece of shit. Well, I'm sorry. He forgot his Quentin Tarantino. Fuck you. Flip flops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. I forgot actually who my number four was. So, um, Oh, you don't have them written down. Do you child? No, I do. I just, I have a lot of tabs open right now. A lot oh. of things going on in my you life. To, you, you don't need to drink that soda. I heard that soda is really bad for you. Is tab. Get you? tab? Uh, did they bring that back? That did they bring that back temporarily tab? Oh, they made it an energy drink, which is like, did why the ever... fuck? tab dude it's like it was like it was like already an energy drink before it was an energy drink i didn't know it went away do they still make rc cola yeah no they do that shit was that shit was under rc cola's dude. not bad it, like on a budget rc cola is pretty good yeah it's it's like the pepsi of budget yeah. drinks diet uh, right well, fucking suck dude diet right not was good. like drinking like piss water dude sam's club fucking sam's club has some good diet sodas dude yeah. sam's club's diet soda is fucking on point it's good no. Don't don't knock it. Uh, my number four is going to be very low considering to you. I know this. It's going to be Romero. Good old Romero, man. You son of a bitch. I know. I know. I, I imagine. Mike just hates fucking be... Pittsburgh and Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's 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 a great place to be. Is the number four greatest horror director of all time. It's definitely not a slight at Romero at all, dude. Uh, I think he is the father of. Like everybody wants to like horror is really good about doing socio political stuff and all that. Mm -hmm. Like it's a really good format for that. But I think he's the grandfather of that. Like I think what he did with Night of the Living Dead, and, and having a black lead, and, and and the time that he did it yes. in, and the the way he subtly told that story mm -hmm. was just fucking balls balls for fucking days man and the way he came up just a, like you said pittsburgh blue collar dude you know yeah. like the way he did it i'm not the biggest zombie dude i like zombie films as much as the next guy but i i don't get into them as much as some but there's no way that you can look at the worlds that he built with zombie movies and just the run that he went on he does have some real bad ones in there for sure like every director does yeah but Dude, even though he's really esoteric as far as like his genre being zombies, for the most part, he doesn't have a lot of hits outside the zombie thing. He fucking he is zombies. Like that's well, yeah. Like, <clears throat> he, he did, not he, one note, but he took what he did and he did it better than anyone ever fucking has or ever fucking will with zombies. Yep, I agree. I agree. And that's agree. why he's my number four. Well, my number three is Romero. You piece of shit. Oh, I thought it'd be higher. Actually, I'm, I'm no, shocked. because I got only five. You know what's gonna happen. I got no dick. <laughs> no, <laughs> yes, it's true. This man has no dick. Uh, no, dude, listen. Uh, well, you said it right. Uh, in the, in the fact, the, um, the the political commentary for him is top notch. Like he is, he was the master at being able to tell a horror story, but also commentate on the political uh, environment of the time. Not only Night of the Living Dead. Dawn of the Dead, like the, the idea of consumerism, that we're all just obsessed with buy, 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 and the idea that the, you're a zombie, basically, and that's why you go to the most important place in your life, which was the fucking mall. It's not like your loved ones. It's like, bitch, I got to go to fucking goddamn Spencer's. <laughs> and then uh, and then Day of the Dead is all about the military complex and, and in the industrialization of, like, almost soulless beings in a way. And I fucking love Day of the Dead's been my, like, that's always been my favorite one. But, dude, yeah, uh, George Romero... You said it right. I mean, he literally is, when you think of zombie, when you think of a modern day zombie, every director, every writer will go back and look at a George Romero film and say, that's a zombie. That's the zombie I'm thinking of. Resident Evil movies, whatever. I mean, back before Romero came on the scene, when you said zombie, it was like a voodoo fucking thing or whatever. It was just like a regular dude, like in Serpent in the Rainbow. But Romero took it to another level. Another level. Also, I like that he hired his friends. Like he like he hired his own like you know people around him to help him like film the shit and he also gave Tom Savini the fucking job that he had and like gave us that fucking wonderful gift. It's Ramiro, dude. All, every day of the week. Number yeah, three. I, I I'm I'm we're almost on the same page. God damn it, almost. My number fucking three is gonna be well Sam Raimi. That's where I'm going. Uh, we're, ah, we're, we're close. We're close on Raimi. Ah, Raimi, but Mike's Raimi. taking the. Oh, I, I thought you're gonna with the French one. Raimi. Ramea. Ramea. Hey, Bonjour. Bonjour. No, yeah, dude, Sam Raimi. Like, there's not 
Sam, the thing about him that's different from every, every other horror director for me that, that could have been on this list is there's not a whole lot of horror movies, right? You got Evil Dead, uh, the whole Evil Dead franchise from the TV show to the three movies. To You've got uh, Malt, uh, Doctor Strange 2, technically sort of a horror movie. There's horror elements in there for sure. Drag Me to Hell, fucking banger. The Gift is, is with Keanu Reeves, sort of mm -hmm. a horror movie. Uh, vibes on that but the thing about Raimi didn't dark man obviously you got to count Amazing. as a horror oh God, i feel yeah. like it's i can't believe movie. i forgot it Shit. <laughs> uh, i think you, you got to count that in there and like even though he doesn't have a shit fuck ton of horror movies he's one of the few directors that almost every single time sam Raimi has dipped his toe into horror it's been a fucking classic mm -hmm. like i don't know who else can say that even even carpenter and craven have a lot of misfires when Raimi does horror it fucking works 90% of the time, every time my headphone just fell out of my ear. Well, and also he, he just, he grant like he, he pioneered so many, the, what he did with evil dead with those huge close ups with the horror comedy, with the things that he did shit. Nobody else had ever fucking done before. I'm not mm -hmm. saying nobody had done horror comedy. I'm just saying there was things that he did with his filming style. That was his style and his alone. And he has trademarks that nobody else does. Like you fucking watch a movie and you could have guess the director. If it's a Sam Raimi movie, you're going to fucking guess it was Sam Raimi. You're going to be able to tell that Sam Raimi made that fucking movie in a way better way than someone like Rob Zombie. You could tell they made their movie in a good way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Definitely. So, uh, Raimi's him. got that big dick energy that we all like to see and love. I'd suck and, it. And he also, Raimi is one of those guys too, 100%. If they're like, well, that's what we got like stoked about when Doctor Strange 2 was announced and like Sam Raimi was directing like, oh my God, this is going to be fucking pretty legendary. It turned out not to be so legendary, but that was because he was handcuffed by, you know, <clears throat> the dick sucker uh, Mickey Mouse. Uh, and that's what <laughs> happened to him. But, you know, uh, if it had been, if if if, if uh, Marvel Studios was think, you know, for like, oh my God, could we go back to brighter days? <laughs> like airplanes wishing on stars. <laughs> B.O.B. <laughs> uh, like when Marvel Studios the deep was cut. Yeah, when Marvel Studios was just Marvel Studios and they weren't like sucking the dick of Marvel or Disney, you know, maybe we could have got a Doctor Strange that was horror related or maybe a Ghost Rider directed by Sam Raimi. Holy Ooh, shit, God, man. Damn. Yeah. They don't they don't have the balls. They don't have the nut sock <laughs> to do what Sam Raimi could have done with that movie. That's why I think of your nut sock is what Disney says. <laughs> And they actually, to be fair, they actually gave him a lot more free reign than we expected. Yeah. But you imagine if a Sam Raimi Ghost House Pictures did did Doctor Strange too, you I, wouldn't even I, be able to fucking. I tell, would. Tell I would rather do Doctor thing. Do Raimi if Raimi, yeah, uh, Doctor Strange, or if, if they got a chance to work with him on on a Ghost Rider. Fuck, dude. Yeah, dude. It'd be amazing. It, it'd be so good. It'd be. I'd put it all in my mouth. I feel like it would be like Drag Me to Hell. I think it would be like Drag Me to Hell if they did a yeah. Ghost Rider. And Drag Me to Hell is underrated as fuck, it's man. fucking amazing. It's it so really underrated. Yeah. Give me your number two and not okay. your movie. I come in here to secret it and I tell you a secret. No but doubt. We know who it's going to be, but which, gonna, which, which, which one? It's going to be Wes Craven. Wes oh. Craven. I don't like it. I don't want to put him on two, but I must. Okay. <laughs> okay the reason why. Okay, listen to this. fucking okay. Dracula. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to suck your blood. I just want to give you some tea that's laced with drugs. And then I'll suck your blood while you're on I want to fuck your butt. I want to have sex with your butt. What? <laughs> uh, no, um, Wes Craven. Listen, dude. Uh, I love Nightmare on Elm Street. It's one of my favorite horror franchises of all time. And what he did with that franchise, bringing that into existence. The, the the like it's one of the coolest characters of all time in in Freddy Krueger right like it, you've never people had never seen a character like that and what was so amazing about it, the the fact that you can't escape this booger this booger man this boogeyman is the fact <laughs> you have to sleep you have to go to fucking sleep at some point it's fucking genius dude and the fact that he learned this from a newspaper which it actually did happen uh in California at some point to some young kid that makes it scarier but he also do the visuals, what he did with those mo that movie. And I know it was like he only did Freddy 1 and then he did uh, New Nightmare. But the visuals, it, it felt like a Wes Craven film. It felt like him. I don't know. And then, you, you know, obviously Scream. Uh, he, he, But he, he made these unique stories with these unique characters that you'd never seen anything like them before. And I, and, and, and in my opinion, Wes Craven's biggest accomplishments ever – were gifting us with uh, Freddy Krueger and having that become part of the lexicon and part of the modern cinema uh, uh, <clears throat> history, as well as Ghostface. Now, I, I, don't get me wrong. Wes Craven had some other great films in his entire career. 100% he did. But to me, Wes Craven, 
he stands out. People, when you say Wes Craven, you know it's Scream or you know it's Freddy Krueger. And, I mean, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that, dude. Holy fuck, dude. Like, that guy, those are two juggernauts. I mean, that's like going fucking 12 rounds with Tyson and, like, a Vander Holyfield and beating those motherfuckers down. Yeah. And winning the belt. I don't know. It's just, that's why. I mean, and I love, dude, I mean, again, Nightmare on the Street is, I think it is my favorite horror series. I mean, I think I've said that before. It really is. Nightmare on the Street is probably my favorite horror series. But and, and what a mind. What a fucking mind, dude. Yeah, and such a sweet guy. Such a, just a generally kind-hearted sweet man. Way better than my number one. What an asshole. <laughs> yeah. It, honestly, let's just let's just put it out there. So I'll I'll, I'll I'm gonna put yours in there because we all know who it's gonna be, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's John Carpenter, yeah. and then I'll, I'll do my number two, and we can talk about it a little bit. Uh, because we I think we all knew this list was coming down to two two gentlemen, uh, and it was gonna be Carpenter and Craven. You're, and I know I your number two is gonna be then. Uh, my number two is Carpenter. Uh, yeah, I it know. is. And then my number one is Craven, and I'll just say why, like real quick. This it, what it's tight. It's tight like a tiger. Like it's so fucking hard to pick between those two. And we even did a whole Friday night fights about this. Um, that's that you can find on the YouTube, uh, picking against their movies with each other. The reason that I went Craven over Carpenter, mm -hmm. and, and it's amazing, dude. As much as I love Romero, and as much as I love Raimi, there is one and two, and then there's a drop off before yeah, anybody huge. else even comes into play. Huge. Like it's huge. It, it was always going to be you. It was always going to be those two <laughs> yeah. at the top, you know? And, yeah. and the, th the reason I take Craven over Carpenter is because one specific thing, and that's, it, it's because I'm a fucking Scream fanboy. No, no, that's not, that's not what you were thinking. I you knew that's shit. what Fuck it was. you! No, I, was, I, I thought it's because you're an atheist and it's a carpenter and Jesus was a carpenter. Like, <laughs> that's actually the truth. I, I that's what it is. You sick yeah. son of a bitch. Uh, that's you got. You, they're on to me. Uh, no, but honest to God, like I, the reason is, is because you always know. And the same reason it's a, it's a. Uh, I'm giving Ramy props for this. Carpenter's movies, you always know it's a carpenter movie, and this is not a bad thing. But the reason I, I appreciate Craven more is because Craven is a director who has, like you said, two of the biggest pillars of, of horror and it's just Scream and Nightmare alone. Forget about fucking Last House on the Left. Forget about yeah. The Hills Have Eyes. Forget about People Under the Stairs. Like all oh, these amazing God, movies he's put one. out there. But you can't watch a Craven movie and be like, oh, this is Wes Craven's trademarks. These are the things he does. Wes Craven has managed to make some of the greatest horror movies of all time and mm -hmm. change the course of horror twice in his career. I know. Both one with what he did with uh, all the amazing, and you said it perfectly about Nightmare, uh, uh, what he did with Freddy, and then doing it with Scream, saving the horror genre with what he did with Scream. Legit, like legitimately fucking came yeah. in there like goddamn David Hasselhoff and saved the horror genre. I was, was going to say more like Michael Jordan when he came back a bull and he actually won a championship for him. Yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah. It, it, whatever analogy you want to throw in there. But Craven, like, he doesn't even have a specific way he does does it he just goes in and guess what there's a lot of fucking misses for sure and a lot of those had to do with studios or like cursed and like the my soul to take and stuff like that but like he he just makes these fucking movies and he doesn't even have a set way of doing it and also i just prefer his personality personally over carpenter i just do yeah, yeah like, and it's, a, it's nothing against carpenter like don't get me wrong we get i mean we get you know we get why he's probably like that. He's probably been turned wrong or, or rubbed wrong the wrong way by fans over the years. Like all they want to do is talk about fucking Michael Myers and Halloween, which again, it's iconic. We get it. We understand. I would get it, but it's I'd like, be just as annoyed, but yeah, I mean, but this motherfucker, like he comes across as like, like a moody guy that works in a pawn shop 12 hours a day, smoking <laughs> cigarettes and just fucking hurt it all. And he's seen it all. And he's just fucking sick and tired right. of working there, but he can't, because he's got to support his fat fucking wife because she refused <laughs> to get a fucking job. And now he's stuck there at 75 years old and he can't retire. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, we're not talking about John Carpenter's wife. We're just saying like, no, it's not his wife. Like no, I'm just saying like, that was just like, yeah. I don't know who yeah. his wife is or his boyfriend <laughs> or a husband. I don't know what the fuck he married. But dude, Craven is just like, he's so fucking thoughtful. Like to hear him speak about the movies that he's made, he's so thoughtful yeah. and he's so deep and he's so respectful and he's, he, he likes the fucked up side of the world and he curses and shit. And he's not like a goody two shoes, but on no. the other side, he's just so thoughtful about the way he handles himself. And I just love that fucking guy. And I feel like dude, Wes Craven actually looked, the, he, he kind of reminds me of like the, um, if, if, if uh, Steven Spielberg looked in a mirror and it was like the black mirror. And it was like the opposite <laughs> version of what Steven Spielberg would be. Yeah. Yeah. He's such a, like, like, because he's got a, general. the vision is perfect, but it's like, yeah. it's the opposite of what, because Spielberg delivers it in like, you know, ET and all these big budget, like, you know, kind of not like shitty, but you know, Oh my God, like the, the hero wins in the end. 
Yeah. And then, but Spiel, but that's Spielberg. And then Craven's like a Spielberg, but he's more like the horror version of Spielberg. 100%. And, th- and this is all those things I'm saying about Craven's not to knock Carpenter. This, speaking of Carpenter, obviously the guy made fucking Halloween uh, alone, but like they all live. of his movies. The God scores, damn. the scores that he puts into his own movies, the vibe is his movies are they're literally like the movie version of just a big fuck you. Like, I'm going to do shit. He his movies are Snake Plissken. You know what I mean? Like, even though that's not horror, but like his don't you movies dare make my are, dick hard right now. <laughs> they don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck. Well, not just not, not, not like. just. Well, you got to remember, dude, not just Snake Plissken. He's also talking. You're talking about assault on Precinct 13. Right. God and, damn, dude. They and, live. Also, also Carpenter was an expert on doing social commentary as well. He mm-hmm. did a very good job of doing social commentary and not shoving it down your throat like a big thumping cock and saying, <laughs> guess what? Fucking feel this way and go on Twitter and get mad about it. It's Here's Ghostbusters, but it's women. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Fuck you, Paul Feig. Uh, uh, but yeah, or Feige, I can't remember his name. But the thing about Feige? Carpenter was for me is like Carpenter's... Uh, just like Craven, Carpenter's got a very, very, very distinctive style on how he tells the movie and how he showcases the movie and how he shoots the movie. So you can definitely know you can you can right away when you start watching a Carpenter film, you already know like it's all like for me, Wes Craven is more of like a, a technical, artistic way of telling the story, and then Carpenter's more of like a dusty, bold uh, Western Kansas, Texas like fucking tumbleweeds, motherfucker. And like you yeah. see, like it's just like this grainy like almost like a grindhouse film Mm. in a way that carpenter tells it but really well done you know what i mean but it it feels like a like a western like it like because steak plisky himself is pretty much a cowboy in a modern day age yeah and then big trouble little china same fucking thing right and i mean if you put their whole careers against each other it's different too because carpenter has a lot of action hits like like you know uh big trouble and 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 like uh escape from la and new york is just like but i just i do feel like i think you can say i don't know if this channel exists like i don't know if this moment in time exists if horror is what horror is without those two guys Mm -hmm. like would horror have survived if scream didn't happen or would would horror have survived if halloween didn't happen would i I don't know i don't know know. Uh, like i legit don't know if it would have been shunned into the darkness if it weren't for those two gentlemen so well but um, you know and we're leaving out some people of course and and we 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 were originally going to do a top 10 but there was other stuff we had to get to but i will say uh toby hooper was is fucking awesome me too he was almost on i I thought about i wanted to put toby hooper in as well but here's the weird thing about toby hooper i only know him for two things i know him for texas chainsaw massacre which is like one of the fucking scariest movies ever it really is and it's well done it's shot so amazingly on a limited budget and that guy really put his heart and soul into that film and you could tell but also poltergeist but the thing about poltergeist poltergeist feels like a spielberg movie and toby hooper was just there there's a few scenes in uh poltergeist that feel like a toby hooper moment but i feel like overall i'm not saying he was doing this but i feel like uh, steven spielberg was back dick writing a lot on directing and no one will ever know for sure the story on that but for sure and and even then like uh, and again it goes back to both craven and carpenter have had a ton of misfires but like their hits are so strong uh raimi never had any misfires with horror i think toby hooper had he had a couple great, amazing movies, and I got. I wish he was still around today making movies, but he had a lot Dude, of you know, fires. I remember like, the one I lot. bought. I bought it on DVD when it first came out at midnight. I I went to uh, Walmart and I bought it. It was a Wes Craven new one. I think it was called They. I think it was called They or something. yeah, yeah, Wes Craven. Fuck, yeah. suck, dude. I yeah. watched that shit. It was only an hour and 21 minutes. And I was like, but it's Wes Craven. I was like, I'm going to watch it. Like, fuck, it sucks. Yeah, Wes Craven. And I was like, and I watched, I watched that shit at night. I was like, you can't scare me at night, you pussy. Oh, my God. <laughs> but it's weird. When you go back and you listen to Wes Craven talk about the movies that, that did not do well, that, that sucked, so to speak, like, he always has such a thoughtful insight. And it's either it, – it always, always chalks up to we took a swing and we missed – yeah. Uh, but we put a little heart into it or it chalks up to studio interference with a movie like curse that they really just jumped in and fucked up. Or there's a movie like my soul to take that he really loves. And, and he feels like there's a lot there, but he had his pulse on the youth. He had his pulse on human beings more than I feel like anybody else did. And Carpenter had some fuck ups too, but Carpenter was all over the place. Uh, well, I feel like, like Carpenter, I'm just going to fucking do some shit and yeah. I'm going to put my stamp on it. If I like, like it, I, great. If you don't well, fuck you. He's the same thing as Raimi. He's a versatile director, which is great. He didn't want to be mm-hmm. pigeonholed into one particular, um, you know, field. I'm only a horror director. He was a versatile guy. I think the the, the problem with Craven, though, 
Well, no, it's not the problem. The problem with Carpenter, and I will agree with this, uh, versus Craven, is that um, I feel like, and this is my opinion, obviously, uh, but I feel like Craven actually gave more of a fuck about his creations and tried to protect them 100%. more than Carpenter did. And I'm only going to say this, okay? I know he smokes cigarettes and he looks cool with long hair. Carpenter does, okay? <laughs> but I'm just saying, because Craven gave a fuck about after Nightmare on Elm Street 1, he didn't want to make an ending where Freddie was coming back, he wanted to end that series and, and go. But then when they were like, all right, well, Freddie, he got mad about what they were doing with the character that early on. Then he wrote the script for them in Nightmare 3. And then finally they asked him to come back for 7. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to save my character because I still care about my character in Freddy Krueger. And he knew the fans loved that character. John Carpenter made Michael Myers. He made Halloween. And it was like fucking phenomenal. It was worldwide, globally, like sensational. Holy shit. I can't believe it. And then he was like, give me my money. <laughs> give me my money give, give me my, my money God. and they're like hey what do you think about rob zombies am i getting paid dollar bill y'all <laughs> fuck it like i feel like he didn't care until later on much later on when they yeah. were doing the uh blumhouse stuff and then he got to be a part of it by doing the music 100%. I, I feel like I, and then again i i could be wrong i don't know carpenter himself i don't know him but it just felt like more like he was like i made some shit i made some money on that motherfucker and then i got to fuck off the goddamn train He's punk rock as fuck, dude. John Carpenter, which is cool. Which is cool. I get it too, man. If I made yeah. a fucking character like that, and my name was going to be attached to a legendary character forever, and I'm like, I got nothing else to do with it. I'll just get my royalties. Fuck yeah, dude. You walk yeah. on. But I feel like I Craven it. was a different kind of guy. He was like, I care about my fucking characters, man. I don't want to. They're like my children. I want to protect yeah. them. Yeah, he's he, and he's such a sweet fucking guy, dude. I just yeah. feel like he did it the right way. If I could have like even without the successes, if I could go through my life and and either the failures or successes with just the grace that Wes Craven had as a human being, then yeah. then you, you fucking won, man. But either way, and by the way, you guys will miss you. I, I'm sure people notice there's no Falchi, there's no Argento. Jay mm. and I both have always been on the same page when it comes to Italian horror that neither of us really get, get it. it. I don't. Um, I don't understand. This, whole <laughs> yeah, with the, with with this with, in the in the vein of John Carpenter's personality, like we're just gonna be honest with you, we we do not get that shit. Like that shit is not our fucking speed of horror. And and maybe the right answer is is Argento or or Fulci or whatever to be in there. But for us, it wasn't even in a conversation. You know, who, <laughs> like you know, what? I, I I'll put an asterisk by him just because I feel like I should. Robert Rodriguez is a great modern day, Some great ones, a modern day storyteller of horror. Tom Holland, awesome. Tom Holland's great. Uh, Zack Snyder does a really good job of telling horror in a, in a, in a very, he's got like, he's got like a, a, like he's almost like a mix of Craven and Carpenter because he's got like those slow down uh, human moments like Craven would focus yeah. on. And then the ups, like the action part that Carpenter would focus on. Yeah. I, I think Zack Snyder is extremely underrated as a, as a horror dir uh, director in my opinion, yeah. but um, and, yeah, and dude, uh, uh, too, uh, his, like the, just not our speed Cronenberg. Yeah. He's great. got great ones, but yeah, for the most but part, he's also got really fucking far out was like, what the, Fucking shit, melted candle, goddamn is going on. I yeah. smoke myself retarded watching this. Like, I don't know, <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what happened. Um, but yeah, but Cronenberg is also amazing. But anyway, that's a top five for us, dude. I think that's a pretty solid top five. Mm. That's a oh, solid and, fucking Mount Rushmore. And absolutely. And and Mike Flanagan for me is just like James that's Wan. Mike, Mike, Flanagan. Mike Flanagan could be on that. Mike Flanagan mannequin. Uh he could be yep. on this list like in a couple or of years. Like, rules. He, yeah. <laughs> he could absolutely be there he's just i don't think he has enough yet he doesn't have any i forgot color. he did dr sleep which is a fucking modern day classic in my fucking opinion it's a great movie he just doesn't have like where Juan has nothing but like horror like modern horror pillars at least yeah. flanagan has amazing horror movies but he doesn't really have that yet so it's like yeah. for me neither of them really crossed that but that's I'm our list not, it's I'm a tough one to for not putting stanley kubrick on it but like let's be real guys he, he didn't have enough I mean, movies no but stanley kubrick did the clockwork orange which is weird yes i understand it's a horror movie but i never really got into it as much as everybody else did the biggest yeah. thing the biggest claim to fame for him is the shining which don't get me wrong that's a fucking goddamn hammer of a movie mm. like that fucker like is 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 the is the is the axel rose of the fucking horror like it's just like goddamn uh uh jack nicholson screaming axel rose lines on top of the <laughs> stage and then yeah. throwing and, and throwing a microphone and beaming somebody in the head it's fucking gnarly dude it's it, like if that if that was all you were known for was the shining my life would be complete if that's all I was known for. But there's so many other ones that, you know, the 2001 Space Odyssey. But the thing about Stanley Kubrick, dude, to me, Stanley Kubrick never really dealt. He took too fucking long with one fucking movie that he never got to other movies. Like he was like, 
too yeah. perfectionist in, in everything he did, which is great because the shining looks amazing, but at the same time, it's like shit, man. Sometimes you gotta be like, fuck it. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't like, know. Hey, Star- hey, sometimes that like fucking angle don't look right. Just fuck it, dude. Let it go. <laughs> yeah. And, and like I know it's like Darth Tinkerbell said Clive Barker. Again, like, c- could he be one of the greatest? Uh, we will we'll never know, but he doesn't have enough movies at all. Not even close under his I, I, you know I, I thought I mean? about Clive Barker, and I'm actually I think people are gonna be surprised. The reason why Clive Barker himself came out with Hellraiser One and he said he was disappointed in the way that he directed that movie. And I think he did a good job, but he was a first time director, he never directed a movie in his life. And he said, I was confused about a lot of things. I was learning on the fly, which, you know, which is impressive. The fact that he did put out a great movie. I think Hellraiser is still a good movie. But at yeah. the end of the day, I, I feel like if he had stu- if he had stayed in the game longer and kept, you know, uh, perfecting his skill, he could have maybe mm. been, you know, on the level and maybe in a top five. Yeah, Nightbreed and- was good, but I just, you know, I don't know. Yeah, and the same thing with like Ari Aster, uh, Ari Aster and Cronenberg, kind of the same idea to me. Like they have great. Uh, Ari Aster doesn't have enough to be in there, obviously, but Cronenberg's the same thing. It's just not my speed, man. I, I feel like they are just their specific thing, but there's no like branch out with them. There is yeah. no worldwide appeal. They're not going to change horror. They might make an amazing film, but they're not going to change the state of horror like a Wes Craven or a John Carpenter could do. But that's just our list. There's a lot of lists. Many like it, but this one is ours. And, um, you know, I like don't make us go and- full metal jacket <laughs> <laughs> that was a oh that was a uh, uh, who directed that movie who directed kubrick. full metal jacket kubrick right maybe it was kubrick that was a badass movie that's like horrific too and what happens to the whole thing with that fat guy that shit was scary as fuck dude fucked up in a whole different vincent way. diafrano wasn't that vincent diafrano that does that full yeah, metal yeah. jacket yeah he's the dude he's the dude i'll be back in one second i just gotta grab a drink i'm not i'm not pp yet. Uh, you do what you gotta do play with your wiener, two seconds. uh touch your butthole Whatever, it's fine. Well, Everybody's like, we... you can smell your finger after you do it. Well, you said I could, so do it on the go. stream. Just do it on the stream is all I'm asking for fuck's sake. Yeah, man. Hell, that was fucking fun, dude. Holy shit. I can't believe we got through it. I thought it was gonna we were gonna drag that bitch out for like a hundred Eli Roth, JT Customs. Yes, Eli Roth. I did think about Eli Roth as well. I had like a whole list. I had like a, a bunch of uh directors that I was gonna put into the into the list, but Meeks couldn't do it. Says JT Kessler says he directed a J. Which one? Eli Roth. What did Eli Roth direct? Uh, he did Hostel. Uh, Eli Roth. He did Knock Knock. He did. Um, I don't know. A, a handful of movies. Not, Am not I being scolded, JT Kessler? I don't know. Eli Roth. What the he fuck? Did, Eli Roth did a bunch of shit, but nothing. I don't know. That's gonna... Okay, yeah, but Eli Roth. Okay, I don't know. I mean, I'm the being Green scolded. Inferno. I, you know, I, I'm just gonna be like, give me detention later. I'm out of here. <laughs> uh, I don't know. If we, if we, you know, of course we might fuck up some of the directors, but hey, what's um? Uh, it's like Rob, Eli Roth and Robert Rodriguez are like hand in hand for me. Like there's stuff there. It's just no, not I, enough yeah, to really I, make this yeah, list. Yeah, Eli Roth. Yeah. I don't know. Um, what timestamp did you leave off on on the super titties? I don't remember shit. Shit. Fuck. Fuck. Fart. I thought you. Oh shit, dude. Hold on. I have to help them because I, I don't. If I if I see something that I if I think sounds familiar, I'll know. Uh, oh, you said Jerry Ramey, so you know you read that one. Okay, Did so go read... down past Jerry Ramey. Okay, how about Iron Baron? At got seven, that one. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, do that. Yeah, you're good. Go that one. Uh, go next. Brand Jackson. Uh, got that one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, oh. Need him, got him, got him, need him, need him, got him. Michael Parton. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. Oh, wow. That was, that was spicy, that Michael. One. Stop one? thinking about us while you're coming in your sleep. Uh, got that one. Yep. Yep. Okay. He offered help for, uh, uh, got that one. That was a good, that's a good question. <laughs> need him, got him, got him, need him, need him, got him. Rootin' Tootin' Texas Tootin'. Okay, no, uh, that's fine. You can take on Rootin' Tootin', and I'm going to take on a pee monster. Here we fucking are. I'm Here we tootin'. fucking are, man. And guys, stay tuned when Jay comes back and when I come back from... Um, uh, I'm just saying I got to go pee. Yeah, yeah, enjoy okay. your pee-pee time. <laughs> I don't want enjoy. you to know, I'm just going to get up and leave, and you're like, no, dude. Can you take us to the bathroom with us? I'll wide scope yeah, your let's dick. let's go to the bathroom together and get banned off YouTube forever <laughs> for showing a dick. <laughs> you always know what to say. Uh, Rootin' Toots is Texas tootin' beef and bootin's. What the fuck? Love y'all. Gonna watch Scream later because I'm currently sawing my leg off. Can I get a Full House episode narrated by Loomis? You know what? That sounds like a really good Patreon request, Rootin' Toot, because I'd fucking watch that too. Everywhere you go. Sam Squanch. I like your name. Reminds me of Bigfoot and Cumming. 
What is your each your favorite, absolute favorite beers? Well, Jay's not here, but I can absolutely answer that for him. It is no doubt 100% and twice on Sundays, Michelob Ultra, as Jay calls it, the superior beer. Jay literally hates all other beers. Like some people, like they have their favorite beer, but they'll also drink whatever. Jay fucking hates, like Jay will drink another beer and almost throw up and piss himself. He hates other beers so bad. Jay, literally, if we were only better at our jobs, would be the perfect Michelob Ultra spokesman. No doubt about it whatsoever. I myself am, uh, by the way, he did come over uh, last week or something. All I had was I just bought a 30-pack, fresh 30-pack of Bush Light, and he did drink those with me and, and found them palatable. Um, but yeah, Jay's all the way Michelob Ultra, no doubt about it. That's the only thing. He doesn't even drink liquor. That's all he fucking drinks is Michelob Ultra. That's it. That's fucking it. Uh, I like to switch it up. I like to do a little bit of whiskey diet, a late whiskey diet, Coke, then ease myself into some light beers as the evening goes on. But I'll drink some thick beers too. Drank a couple of these beers called White Girl Wasted the other day at the bar. Had three of them. And I was like, Katie, am I dying or am I just fucking really fucked? I don't know what's happening to me right now, but I'm shit face hammered after three beers. But no, uh, I have switched to Bush. Like I drank Miller Lite and it wasn't the Bud Light thing. I don't give a shit. But like I drank Miller Lite for the longest time and I started having these insane fucking hangovers. Like insane. I don't know what happened. Like I would go out with friends and the next day I would be like panic attack ridden hungover. And everybody else that drank just as much as I was fine. I was like, yeah, my dad, what's going on? So I decided I'll just switch beers. I switched beers. I started drinking like Bud Light or whatever instead of Miller Lite. Hangovers, fucking gone. You know, you still get them if you're stupid. You, you take seven shots at volleyball or whatever. But like, yeah, they're gone. And now since then, I've switched to Bush Light. Uh, I have a couple friends of the channel that love Bush Light that's, that, that swear by it. And I said, I'll get me an old fucking 24 pack. It's cheap. And I've just fallen in love with that can with the, that lake water on it. I don't know what to tell you, man. Every time you open a beer, you get that bush. It's fucking good shit. It's cheap. It gets me going. So currently, Bush Light is my beer. Oktoberfest is back. Have you guys noticed? It's already back. They're putting Halloween shit on shelves fast as fuck this year. Seriously, in a, in a couple of years, it's going to be on the shelves about like January. Because people are just racing. Every year, Halloween shit is on shelves quicker and quicker and quicker. It's fucking awesome. I love it. Michael Parton said, according to God, Gun Brainiac, and according to Gun, James Gunn, Brainiac will be in Superman Legacy, and I'm hoping it'll be Ralph Fiennes who was Lord Voldemort. Yeah, Ralph Fiennes, fucking classic actor. Um, I'd love to see Brainiac. Again, going back to what we were talking about earlier, we, we've never really had a good Superman villain on screen. No, I'm not saying they all sucked, but like we've never had a great Superman villain in cinema. We just never fucking had it. Uh, awesome thanks i love your name i love your name says uh if jason ever never got his iconic hockey mask what sort of mask headpiece head covering hat do you think would be a suitable replacement uh fucking old baghead man I, I i know that the town the dreaded sundown existed um did i just say that fucking right shit um with my big back boots and my old suitcase uh but i don't know man like i think jason could have been anything like when you look at the scream documentary that i just watched the other day all the different ideas they had for ghost face mask were wild. They all seem to have that same shape, but they had like giant bulging eyes and like crazy teeth and like fucking wild shit. Nothing close to the ghost face mask. And they even said in that documentary, he was like, we made our own replicas. We got stuff that was just slightly bit different. And just even with those slight differences, he's like, we could tell this is not it. This is not ghost face. It's not the same. And he, he even all he even filmed a day of shooting knowing he was going to get sued before they found the rights to Fun World or whatever, saying it's just got to be this. So I don't know. That's a hard question to answer, but I think that the Baghead always looked good. And just knowing that, I think if they went with Baghead, you would see a lot more of Jason unmasking himself. You know, just knowing that fucked up thing was under there. Um, but yeah, that's the only thing I could think of. Like a football helmet wouldn't fucking work. Like, I don't know. It could be anything. And that's another thing. Like why, where are the fucking slashers? Where are the fucking new monsters with new masks? Why are people not throwing new ideas and, and new masks out there? Jason had a fucking hockey mask. That was cheap as shit. And it worked. Because they don't know what to do anymore. Hollywood don't tell me. Dumbasses. My business, devil woman. AI is going to fix it all. Maybe. 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 Who knows? Fuck no, no. Right. I'm Disney says, Bob Iger says, suck my dick. God, Bob Iger looks like he's... Shit? They're oh, pumping yeah. tons of fucking money into developing AI so they don't have to pay those fucking writers or actors that you want. Just, we'll fight your ass. Man, it's going to be a dark night. I, like, I, I really hope that the writers and the actors win because uh, well, it. doc... it's just going to be Marvel all day long. So... Everything's going to feel like a Marvel movie, you know? 
if they do that. Yeah, well, you know, people will still go and watch that shit and make them money. Yeah, and then eventually it will all just die, which is going to happen either way. Anyways, oh, dude, on to have here. I, I, oh my god, this has to be safe for another stream. But holy fucking shit, dude! I went onto a like not last night, the night before. I went into a deep dive gay conspiracy bar? theory. Yeah, I went into a huge gay, gay dive. Bar. Looked at all sorts of dicks and penetrations and cock oh, rings. Yeah. But why didn't you take me after that? Well, I took selfies with it, but I deleted it afterwards because I felt ashamed. And I didn't want people to know about it. But after that, I went into a deep dive of conspiracy theory, and dude. Project Bluebeam, have you heard of this shit? Oh my <laughs> fucking lords, dude. Mm -mm. <laughs> I know it sounds gay and it sounds porn, but it's not. It's not. I there's actually Project Bluebeam does sound like a gay porn actor, like that's a superhero. <laughs> Project Bluebeam here to Project help you. Blue but no, uh dude, there, I oh my god. At, at, at some point, maybe on a Patreon stream, dude, we'll talk about that. Oh my fucking lord, dude. There's so much cool shit. Well, I'm just gonna Google after this and bury the lead, dude. It's it's all alien shit. It's you'll you'll love it. It's fucking oh, that cool. actually gets me it's hot scary. And it's night. scary because it could fucking happen. But it's like and it's like like again, it's like a very deep dive conspiracy theory hole. But it's fucking. You cool. ever get you ever get excited about that? Like, oh man, I'm gonna Google the shit out, dude. Of I, I know. I woke down up April at four in the morning, and, <laughs> and like she was sleeping, like like she was like super like like she was out, and I was like I was like hey hey. Hey, because I was awake and I was like all wired up. I felt like uh, what was that? Movie? I felt like uh, insomnia in the, in the movie Insomnia. I was like, hey, hey, I was like, hey, look up. I was like, I can taste him. And then she's like, what? I'm like, nothing. If you're not even interested, if you don't even want to show like the slightest <laughs> bit of interest in something that could save your fucking life, that I was about to give you the information. And then on the next morning, she's like, what were you telling me about? Then my my enthusiasm went away. I was like, nothing. Yeah, yeah, you lost your chance. Yeah, it's like now you don't know. Now idiot. you're gonna fucking die along with all the other sheeple because you, you don't that, know. You have that exact same. I, I imagine you have the exact same attitude and vibe as uh, James Woods in any given Sunday when he has his his like cheerleader hooker girlfriend on the on the field. He's like, "Come on, candy, right now!" And she's like, "No, I'm gonna stay here." He's like, "Fine, stay and get butt fucked by twelve Neanderthals. See if I give a shit." Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely the same vibe because I get mad. I was like, "I'm trying to save your fucking life here." Like right now, you think it's crazy. But in a few more months, maybe next year, you're going to be like, shit, why did I listen to him <laughs> while you're being burned alive by alien rays? <laughs> Cameron Howmans at 8.14 p.m. is where we're at, by the way, if you uh, want to scooty poot over there. Uh, up, first time catching one of these live, you guys rule. Just took a large poo. Okay, huh. keep it real, y'all. Hey, I like your style, man. I love talking about pooping. I love talking hey, to people all about my bowel movements, dude. There's nothing better than watching a YouTube stream or a YouTube video taking a shit. That's the best. Yeah. That's like that's like what that's what it was invented for. Yeah, it's a so. it's a time passer. I just I, I hate my bathrooms all the way in the corner of the house. So sometimes the Wi-Fi is not great, and I'm trying to watch porn. I mean YouTube videos, and it like yeah. cramps out. I'm like ah oh, damn. You gotta it. be careful. Uh, but yeah, no thanks, Cameron, and welcome, welcome. Appreciate it, Cameron. You're our type of guy. I can tell already. You like uh, it. Uh, and now we're at Ben Jammin, not Tramer, who says late to the party. So someone may have asked this already, but what are your thoughts on Thirteen Ghosts potentially getting a TV series? I I'll leave that to you. you. Okay. Ben, not Tramer. You're a liar. I could see your fucking profile pic, you fucking dead fuck that got hit by a goddamn car because you were drunk crossing the street, you jaywalking son of a bitch. Anyway, Ben, not Tramer. Uh, I, we didn't get to ask that question. Well, no one asked that question, uh, but I will say uh, I think it's a pretty good idea. I think it's a really good idea. I think what they should do is that um, – do you guys remember – uh, on the DVD of 13 Ghosts, the remake, of course, not the not the original, but on 13 Ghosts, the the uh, on the DVD, there was a bonus thing where you could go through and uh, uh, Cyrus was that his name? Cyrus, I think, yeah. The, the, he went through each profile of the ghosts that he caught and like what their story was and how they, how they caught him. And it was like a very um, summarized um, telling of each ghost and and how they were acquired. Uh, I think what you do with 13 ghosts and I, and I would love this. I think it'd be cool. You take each 13 ghosts or, e or each ghost from the 13 ghosts and you do one story each. So you have 13 episodes, right? That leads up into the movie 13 ghosts and how they caught them. Uh, Cyrus and uh, Matthew Lillard's character. I can't remember. That would be cool. I would love to see that. I, I think it would be cool to how they found out the lore, like the lore behind each one, like more in depth lore is what I'm saying of each ghost in 13 ghosts and how they actually went about collecting them. Cause I always feel like that was such a lost, uh, 
like a lost uh, opportunity for them. They could have done. I mean, of course, it was a it was an early two thousands movie, so they weren't putting that much effort into it, I guess. But they could have done that where they they showed more of them how they captured each ghost. They, they only the only one they really showed was at the very beginning. Um, that one dude, I can't remember the the big albino looking fucking dude. But yeah, dude, I think it would work. I think it totally would work. Mr. Clumps. <laughs> he says my wife doesn't. He said my wife does not know I am gay. <laughs> oh, Mr. Clumps, do you take clumps after the gay sex, or has it always been like? <laughs> All right, we won't tell nobody. Nobody say shit about Mr. Clumps' wife or to his wife that he likes. He likes that booty juice. It's all right, Mr. Clumsy. Holy fuck. <laughs> Is that your god? No, I know that's not your profile picture. Holy shit. That profile pic. Woo. <laughs> you look like you got busted, like fucking still in a stickers bar and a goddamn Gatorade. <laughs> and you, like, you were drunk on a golf cart while you got, while you were doing it. I don't know. Thank you, man. <laughs> Thank you, dude. Uh, coming through, coming through, coming through. Joe Valentine. Okay, so okay, I'll, I'll, Joe, uh, definitely let Mike uh, take that one. That's an eight twenty-seven. Uh, okay, um, yeah, I'll do that with Mike. So when Mike gets back, uh, eight twenty-seven. Uh, Joe Valentine, thank you so much, Joe. Um, Michael Parton says, "Gay Dracula, it's not your blood. He wants to suck, or he wants to suck. No, he, he, well, if he's gay, he wants to suck your juices from your wiener." Uh, Jamie Smith, thank you so much. Says, sorry, I'm off topic, but I just rewatched 2017 Power Rangers movie. Loved it. So why no sequel? Like I thought it was a great adaptation. I did too, dude. Um, Mike and actually went and saw that in theaters. Uh, I thought that the Power Rangers movie was pretty fucking good, dude. Especially when they they did a good job of bringing it to a modern age, and they 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 weren't so tacky and corny with it as they could have been. And there was a part like when they were all like when the when the uh, the um, the dinosaurs, or what the fuck was, what were their fucking vehicles called? <laughs> they were dinosaurs. Uh, the the uh, the Zords were like coming together, and that you heard that go go Power Ranger. Like it was it was done in such a good way to like, bring that nostalgia feeling. But yeah, everybody did a great job acting in that movie, and I I personally feel like they 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 bailed on that way too early, and then they even dropped the fucking teaser with the Green Ranger. Remember, because uh, at the end of that movie, you hear Tommy being called over the intercom. Oh man, I thought it was great. Uh, yeah, dude, I like that movie a lot too. I, I I don't know what happened. It was a fun, exciting thing, and it just I don't think it did well at the box office. It did right? do well. That's why they enough. got rid of it. But they, the, yeah. the, the the main guy, Jason, the guy that played Jason, was the guy from uh, the older brother in Stranger Things uh, season two. He's yeah. a really good actor. So was, it, I mean, they had a great. They actually had a really good uh, team of actors. But anyway, on Joe Valentine, it's on eight twenty seven. That's for both of us. But I had to wait for you to get back. So. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, says Bryson loves the Slender Man shout out, but he loves Mike too and wants a Biscuit Boy shout out from Marky Mark. Also, if he can get one from Loomis, that would be great too. Um, um, let me tell you something, Bryson. What you want to do is you want to have your protein. You want to have your protein. You want to get in that gym. You want to hit that bow flex. You want to hit it fucking hard. And you're gonna be able to. You're gonna need to get your cardio in too. Watch Bryson, your, you need your cardio. Watch your goddamn get, mouth. Get your cardio in there too, Bryson. The boy's young. He can understand. He can understand. He's all right. He knows what's going on. He has the internet. He has TikTok. He has a YouTube. He knows what's going on. That Bryson knows what's up. Bryson, you get in there and you do your cardio. You outrun the fucking wind. You outrun the fucking wind. And then when you get a girlfriend, you take it on a Ferris wheel. And then when you take it on a Ferris wheel, I'm going to leave that to the movie. Watch my movie, 1996's Fear. Watch that, Bryson. Watch Fear to teach you how to treat women. Nicole Forever. Don't Catch you dare watch chest, that Bryson. movie unless you're old enough. Uh, Bryson, uh, nice to see you. I'm glad you're having a good time on the stream. Uh, and I don't know how old you are. Young you are, but here's three letters like in Sesame Street. You like Sesame Street, Big Bird, and things like that. You like that? There's three letters I want you to learn right now J O P. It's never too early. That stands for job. Go get one. I don't care if you're eight or if you're 14. Go work at McDonald's. They're paying $16 an hour for a Big Mac sandwich. All you got to do is put bread, tomato, lettuce, mayonnaise, and a burger. 17 16 an hour my god bryson lunch <laughs> if only in our day if only in our day dude i know i, I we, we would never be doing this with inflation be fucking prime managers no, at McDonald's. to be fair 
Okay, we're gonna jump right into our screen or our, our, uh, our Friday Thirteenth. These okay, are let's, our let's lightning round it. Let's lightning round it. Jason unmasked ranking. I'm gonna share this with you guys here now. And I, by the way, I took off Roy. Roy doesn't count. Like that count as an unmasking. I didn't even have that in my well, list. Well, some people would like say it was face. a shocking unmasking because you didn't know if it was Jason or not. I mean, you yeah, didn't know I, back in but the that day. would. I mean, I think we could definitely. No, I don't care. He's not on my list. It'd be last. It'd be yeah, last. He's not yeah. on my list at all. But yeah. So, um, starting with, let's just start. You want to start with the best, or you want to start with the worst? Let's start with the best. Okay, starting with the best. Uh, uh you go ahead and go first because I'm doing well, this live. I've not even made my list. Okay, yet. well, my you motherfucker. I'm going. I, I'm feeling. Dude, the my flow. balls were sweating when I was making this list like <laughs> ten minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, okay. Uh, my number one is 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 the uh, the new blood. It's the new blood, uh, and I know a lot of people are going to be like, "Well, why didn't you pick?" You know, another iconic one. But this is the first time you see Zombie Jason. This is the first time you see. Kane, fucking legendary hotter, uh, and, and I, it's it, dude, to me, it's one of my favorite Friday the Thirteenth movies ever. And I know people are like, "Oh my god, it's like X Men versus Jason." That's why it's cool, you dumb shit. It's cool. <laughs> it like it changed the dynamic. It was different. You'll say that. You'll so, say that. <laughs> you'll say that. Uh, no, it, but I, I, that's why I like it for because everything else had become pretty much standard soup, and then they came out with the the new blood, and it was totally different. And I liked it, but dude, look how fucking cool and nasty he looks. Holy shit. He looks like every goddamn Speedway goddamn junkie asking for $2 outside <laughs> for another fucking 40 And I'm not talking about me, even though I've done that before, and it was natural light. But, dude, he was cool looking. It was it was the first time you saw a zombified Jason. Uh, and uh, maybe one of the most terrifying looks he's ever had. And I loved, loved the look, dude. The, the chain around the neck. So badass. So cool. Dude, to me, that is... For me, that's always been Jason Voorhees. That look, that particular style, the way that Kane Hodder did it. So that, there you go. That's my number one. It is also my number one, Jay. And you're absolutely wow! right to say this about it. We wow! agree. We agree. And I, I've learned to love that movie a lot more than I used to. I hate the opening where like the, the dad, like that's she's stupid, fucking, yeah. where she like, I accidentally killed my dad with my telepathic powers. Yeah. It's so dumb, uh, and then the end of it's so dumb. But like, as far as looks goes, I think that might be the coolest looking Jason, both masked and unmasked. You could argue, but yeah, dude, it, all these other iterations we're going to talk about look cool and they look wild and they look wild and crazy kids. But this one felt fucking real. Like he, his mouth moved, the way his neck turned, it didn't feel like a, a, a like a just like a like they made it in in the movie. Um, ghosts like making pottery together while they're fucking oh, yeah. and sweaty you know like this yeah. felt like an actual living breathing thing and it was so cool looking it was so freaky that feels i know it sounds dumb but that looks fucking real like if i imagine what jason would look like if he was this supernatural unkillable being that's what he would fucking look like and you know he has bad breath or it just looks like anybody that's sitting at the dmv waiting on their license renewal <laughs> his nose <laughs> i've been here nose... for 84 fucking years dude <laughs> Yeah, his nose looks like there were there were twins in the womb, and they both had to fight each other to see who fucking won out. Actually, it's that's got like teeth. or or maybe like every drunk guy at a karaoke bar looking at like that one girl that's left at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah. got the have teeth, man. He's it looks like that dude in Big Daddy's. Like he he drinks a lot of soda pop. But uh, yeah, that was that's the best one, man. I totally agree yeah. with you. That's my number one. As will okay, okay, okay. So Give my me number, number two, my number two, going to be the final chapter. Okay, we're gonna talk about the final chapter. Damn it. The final chapter, holy shit! Look at this goddamn face. That was do that. That's how I look when hey. she told me there was a pop quiz on the first day. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, dude. Like, listen, listen. That might be. I think we've talked about this, but that might be the best Jason movie. Yeah, it, it's like it, it might be. Arguably, it might be the Jason movie. It might be. But he looks. This is also another iconic look for Jason. This was. Uh, if you look at um, the final chapter. With uh, what was it? Uh, it was Corey Fel Haim, right? Corey Haim, right? Corey Feldman. That's what I said. Corey Feldman. That's what I said. <laughs> uh, Corey Feldman. Uh, it, it like the movie feels eighties. It's just got this really cool. I know it sounds weird, but when you watch this movie, it's relaxing to me. Like it's got like a it's got like a very cool vibe to it throughout I get the that. entire time, and it kind of makes you feel like it, it feels like coming home. He looks cool as fuck. He looks amazing. And and again, if not for the new blood, this would be the iconic for me. Jason look, period. Um, he just looks amazing, dude. And you imagine like this was back then, and look how look how great the prosthetics look, dude. Without CGI, yeah, 
and and not just that. And by the way, I'm just I'm just going to say this is my number two as well. We are on even keel so far, friend. Uh, we this is my number two as well. I'm going to make these smaller so that we can fit them all in for sure. But yeah, that's my number two as well, dude. And it's not just that and how badass he looks right there with his sick twisted smile. He doesn't look like dumb, stupid Jason. Like I accidentally fell into the fucking lake. <laughs> you know, he's got. Yeah. <laughs> he looks like I've been doing this shit on purpose. I think <laughs> you. You know, he's got this like sly yeah. look to his face, but like the. The wrinkles and the way it slides on the side. And then when Corey Feldman, or as I like to call him, Billy Corgan from Smashing Pumpkins shows up, it's mm -hmm. like, ah, <laughs> you know, like as a rat in a cage and, and, and hits him with that, with that machete. And then when he falls on it, the practical effects right here, watching his brain just split down and roll oh, down good. the machete. Good. So cool. Oh, good. Fucking amazing, dude. No. Uh, so yeah. So that's me number two as well. Now it gets tougher. It does get tougher. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, it, it took me a, okay. So my number three, and I had to show it some love because I, I went through, you know, I actually took a minute because I was like looking for all the unmasks and, and like what's, uh, you know, and it, it, this one didn't really come up as like something that people would look at, but it's got to be part two for me. It's got to be part two. And I, and I feel like it was an iconic moment in that film. Uh, part two was. <laughs> Yeah, Scott Nacho. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, Scott Nacho. I've been yeah, there a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Scott Nacho? Yeah. You don't say what? what? The devil. A little bit what? louder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, dude. But th listen, this is the first time you ever saw Jason Voorhees ever. He was old backhead Jason in part two, and he burst through the window, mad as fuck. That someone like rode on his John Deere. And he was ready to rip that girl's boobies off. Uh, <laughs> I, I, dude, he looks like, he definitely looks like, um, hey, you guys. So he doesn't look, he's not zombie version, at all, but he's very deformed, uh, which is sad. But he's, I feel like I'm not trying to make fun of him, but like he's very deformed. He's very human, though. And you can tell why, you know, he was like maybe rejected or made fun of, you know, as uh, as his mother, Pamela Voorhees, had talked about in the first movie. Um, and, um, yeah, dude, I, like, I, I think again, it's, it's just, it's a great shot with him coming through the window and the reveal. This looks like fucking carrot top when he retires, uh, from all the drugs <laughs> that he's done. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, dude, and, and after the plastic surgery starts to melt. Uh, so yeah, dude, it, that's what, that's why part two, you know, I, I don't, you know what I actually part two, I've grown to love part two. And you know, I, nobody you don't and i know we get shit for this all the time dude i don't go back and watch friday the 13th the original anymore i just don't i don't need to i don't no want to. to there's no point why yeah. the first one when it came out you were unsure about who the killer was but once it's revealed you just want to get to jason so you gotta really, watch all back then it 100 loses its appeal once you figure out the whodunit of it all mm -hmm. like as, as a movie it does not hold up for sure and and like you said people shit on that but it's the truth i feel like uh that's a that's a great he does it what he reminds me of is like sean morgan the singer of cedar when he's like uh <laughs> yeah. Mom, yeah. Be some gasoline. yeah you know your face was in his armpit <laughs> <laughs> it was at one point in my life but yeah he definitely looks like uh He's just he's just in a bluegrass band, you know. He's just in a bluegrass <laughs> band, and it's the first time he makes his face reveal. <laughs> that's that's actually the singer of Constant Sorrow. You've been fooled. <laughs> ah, I'm a man of Constant Sorrow. I, I was that in 10%. Yours, is, is yours the same? Uh, mine is not the same when it comes put to that, that. But one. you put that in your pile. Oh shit! Fuck me. Sorry. Uh, no, but really, fuck me. Um, no, my number three is gonna be. I just love this fucking movie. So it's this dude right here. Uh, Friday Thirteen. <laughs> I mean, you, guys, like, you always talk about this guy. I <laughs> love this dude, dude. Not only do I love the original look of of Jason in this movie because Richard Brooker was so good and he had those gigantic traps yeah. and that green shirt and just lumbered around, but this scene right here is just so fucking. I think it's the most legendary unmasking because he's hanging from that rope, and he's like, "No, I'm fucking better than this. Watch this shit." And he pulls himself up, and then he goes, "Ha!" He's like, he's like, he smiles. Uh. He's like, oh. Yeah, yeah. He, he literally goes, uh -huh. and then he pulls it back on, and then he just yeah. starts chasing her again. It's like he wanted her to see it. He's like, "Look upon your work, child." <laughs> you know? Yeah. Or yeah. like in a. Um, uh, James Bond when uh, uh, Javier Bardem's like is like look upon, he pulls out the teeth and his face looks like look upon your work yeah man. yeah, yeah dude <laughs> oh, like, uh, fucking guy <laughs> fucking poor guy dude he looks like he's like handsome on one side he's fucked on the other 
<laughs> yeah, he's literally just he's like, like, hey. He's like, yeah. Ugh. He's like, you don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody know Jimmy Jolly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm actually shocked that you put it that high because it's like, it, like <laughs> I saw this, like, this shit makes me laugh. The way he's like, <laughs> it's fucking He looks like a goddamn fucking wrestler in WWE. He's like a bushwhacker. <laughs> Or like at the end of a Mentos commercial, like the movie just stops and he just like pops a Mentos. It's like the fifth maker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, he could have been the guy that was like, uh, when you did an uppercut in Mortal Kombat, it's like, whoopee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. I love it so much. All right, so, uh, my number two or my number four, I mean, is going to be um, part six. Oh, I, I can't remember the, uh, the name of it. Uh, was that Jason? Jason? Uh, Jason lives. I think it was the opening, right? Yeah, the opening. The graveyard. Yeah, with the maggots and shit. Look, yeah. this actually, there. This was a strong contender for me to be uh, at uh, number three, and I, I didn't put it there because it, because it's only a brief shot, but it's one of the coolest shots ever. Uh, because after the the, uh, the 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 very disappointing flaccid dick that was part five, I even though I do enjoy it now. But everybody that saw it in the theater back in the day were like, well, we didn't get to see Jason Voorhees. They do such a great job in the opening of this where the light, I mean, it's it's so Frankenstein stupid, whatever. But the lightning bolt comes down, it, it regenerates Jason. And then you have that one shot where the, the camera's on his eye and it opens up and the maggots are crawling around his eyes. They're falling That's so down. fucking cool, dude. And he, like yeah. he's standing there and you can see the maggots like fucking falling from his face. And he like, yeah, he looks like Keith Richards getting ready for one final <laughs> concert but like but he's got like dude like look how fucking scary that is that is so menacing and scary because like this motherfucker lost a shit ton of facial structure but he kept all his goddamn muscle all of it for some reason or another that motherfucker is still built like a brick house so i yeah i want to say dude like for me like I, I wanted this one to be higher on my list because it, that shot right there, like when you zoom into it, it's it looks very much like a skull. Like you can yeah. see, like that left side of his head or, or right side of his head or whatever looks very skullish. They just, if you watch that scene, they don't show it. Like they, I don't know if it's the lightning. The, 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 you see it in the lightning flashes. It's only brief. Yeah, it, they, they, but when the you're right when the maggots fall off and they're hitting the floor, like That's oh, this is gnarly. gnarly. Shit. It's gnarly. It, well, yeah. it just it made him it, it, like it just took him to another level. But uh, again, he's it's not. It doesn't rank higher than that because you don't really get to see him in the light that well. Yeah, that's and that's the problem with it. And I imagine that's probably just because they knew it didn't look that right. But it also, it makes you wonder, you know? It makes you wonder what's under there, which makes it a little bit scarier. Oh, oh God, I got the hickey ups. Makes you wonder, huh? Whether she's naked under that toga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with, and again, I'm doing this live uh, in the moment, dude. I'm going to go with fucking... I'm going with with part two. Oh. Amen to Cotton Eye Joe. <laughs> Just like we said. Oh, yeah. Cotton Eye Joe, boy. It's the moment because you've never seen Jason up to this point. You've you never like to seen see homos naked? <laughs> Fuck me, brother. Fuck or whatever it was that she was saying. I'm your sister. I'm your sister. Uh, but no, like you never saw him up to this point. And the 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 genius of Friday the 13th part two is my favorite point in that whole movie. And one of my favorite points of the whole series is like when she's sitting in that cabin and you see the, the window right here and you just see old fucking backhead coming down the mountain and he's just running. <laughs> but it's yeah, just it scary is. as fuck to me. I know. <laughs> but when he busts through that window and it's just like, da, 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 and they like slow it down and shit like that. It is so off putting. Like, yeah. you're just like, wait, what the fuck? Surreal. It's the yeah, like you, there was no like, what does Jason look like? Are we gonna see him or whatnot? They were just like, here he is, bitch, <laughs> male motherfucker. <laughs> and, and even though the effects are kind of terrible, like you know what I mean. And like when yeah. he turns his face, you can see the mask like sag and get all like like flumple fucking up and shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's still just the moment adds to it, and the redneckisms and the fucking beard, and he looks like Sean Morgan from Seether yet again. I'm so. just gonna say he's definitely gone to Aspen Diddle. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Wish. lord you gotta you gotta pull those goddamn teeth out ain't nothing wrong with them they're just a little <laughs> dirty but they could be a problem later on in your future you look like you might have gingy bodies <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's gonna be my number four for sure uh i'm gonna make all right well tiny. uh we'll, we'll we'll get right into it and we'll just go ahead and keep uh keep on fucking this train it's gonna be uh it's gonna be i'm gonna wait until you shrink that down like my dick just got shrunk oh yeah it's cold in here. Uh, it's going to be, uh, and I, I hate this fucking movie. I fucking hate it, dude. 
but I gotta give it props for what it is. Is Manhattan? Oh when shit! I, when I saw this for the first time, that look how fucked up that looks, dude. That's scary <laughs> as fuck, dude. Yeah, she threw like uh, uh, she threw uh, like some uh, lizard, uh. like she threw like some lizard uh, jizz at his face, and he's like, "Oh, <laughs> god damn it! I got jizzed on by a frog or a lizard." I mean, but look at that shit, dude. That's fucking scary. You imagine seeing that shit? Like, I'm sure that most women see that on top of them when they sober up and they're like, Oh my God, I went home with that thing. But that thing looks like a toxic Avenger, like half melted, like turd that no one's flushed in the toilet for like two days. And it's like starting to like form a face. Like, dude, there's something disgusting, disturbing and, and absurd about this particular look of Jason. Uh, it do this. It's actually very fucking frightening. Dude. It's actually very nasty, nasty, Real um, nasty. Yeah, dude. Like he looks like an overcooked fucking um, bratwurst. <laughs> it's like, hey, welcome to the homepage for goop.com. <laughs> yeah, dude. I don't know. I, it's never it's fine for me. That movie fucking blows ass the entire yeah, way through. But that, does. that right there, that's some fucking good work on their on their effects team. Yeah, and my only thing with it, and I'll talk about when I, I'll, I'll wait to talk about it when I get to mine when I put it there, but it's just. It, the reason it's not hired like i think it looks cool you know what i mean like i do think it looks cool it's just in action though it's just it's so like the reason that the number one is the number one you know with the mm. new blood is because it's so animated and active with that one as cool as it fucking looks and it does look gnarly as shit it just had no movement to it you could tell it was like on a stick and someone was just like totem pulling it they were like because he just goes it's like when 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 you finish but she keeps sucking like oh yeah yeah animatronic it looked like animatronic it does yeah 100 percent. but damn the just the picture of it's cool um, my next one, I will go with. Um, I'm gonna go with old Derek Mears here, man. Uh, the Friday. No, no, you can't go with that one. That was like that's behind the scenes. He didn't it is. Like, you can't it use is. it. Use it then. It, well, the other one was too dark. Like you couldn't. That's right. Uh, you gotta use what's in the movie. I know, which is why it's so low. It's why that's like if, you got to use that one. No, if it looked this good in the movie when they showed it, it would have been way higher though. That's why it's so low. Like this, oh, like and so yeah, you're right. Disclaimer: in the movie, it doesn't look this good. It's it's quick and it's shrouded or whatever. That's why I'm but... looking at you right now with how you chose. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you tied <laughs> rules for you, but not for me. This is what they tell you: guac is extra. <laughs> Looks like we got uh, peanut butter stuck between your fucking gums. <laughs> Long story short, it does not look that good in the movie, but um, yeah, it's still fucking. They should have showed it like this. You're 100 percent right. They, they, there they have been more light. Right I, you know, I never, I never, I never understand dude, like with uh, with with horror movies. Like, like I understand that they want to create an atmosphere that's like that's very like sinister and 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 frightening, and you're unsure about what's around the corner. But when you darken a film too fucking much, and you yeah. can't see the fucking effects they've worked on. What the fuck is the point? Honest to God, dude, it's like this is what it's probably like for people who are still online dating. Like his his this side over here, like the nice side is probably what he takes pictures of. But then you meet him at like Applebee's and he's like, <laughs> that looks like that looks like me when I'm trying to hide a fart from my wife. And then it comes out louder than I thought. And that's the face that I make. <laughs> uh, that happened last night i thought it was gonna be like a soft fart and it was like <laughs> and i was like <laughs> I, I looked around the the room to see if she was awake and she wasn't <laughs> but that's how but that's how but that's how i like i like every like time stopped and i looked like that i was like <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he fell asleep on a on a uh, iron <laughs> yeah. yeah all right what is yours slut that was it it was only five i i, I picked mine uh oh, wait wait we still got more we missed no, one yeah uh no two uh one we missed two we missed one, two. two three no my, there you, is... you missed one wait you've got five. Oh no i put my... no yeah you got five and i got five so now it's yeah, your turn it. we only had, we did five there's more oh you would you just did top five yeah i thought we were doing top five uh oh, masks fuck. well we'll just throw this in I, I i didn't know that we were doing that so where what do you put where do you rank Jason X? It's just a quick one. I mean, yeah. Look at this I, thing. I mean, below. Ran those. <laughs> that, just, that looks like fucking moldy ass cheese. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you don't really see much. It don't even look like, I don't know, man. It looks like a, like a wax museum that was like in the sunlight for a long time. And then people <laughs> forgot to fucking take care of the wax 
Dole. I, Only it, rainbows it's, after. It's rainbows. low. I mean, I can't. I mean, I, I. I mean, it's low. I don't even know what we how we do this now. Well, no, I, here I got you. I got you. Uh, what it's but so for you with what you have left, it's just between this one and original Jason. Okay, Jason X then. The Jason X over that bullshit. Like that kid looks like he's suffering from eczema or whatever that skin condition. <laughs> that skin like that skin condition is that you get. Like, it's all then, itchy and shit. And then where do you put Friday the Thirteenth, two thousand nine, Jason? I, I mean, it's, so okay, well that's above Jason X, and then Jason X, and then the original. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. So uh, I'll stick you in there, old skishy face, and then two thousand nine underneath it, and then finally this dude over here for yeah. Jay. And then the way I would wrap mine up, which I know this looks like shit, but sorry guys. Um, let's see where where the, where the fuck is it? Where is it? Uh, for me, I would definitely go like you said, Manhattan. Mm -hmm. afterwards because even though like in action it looked like shit and just ay, 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 yeah. like a sprinkler uh, um it still oh, looks dope as shit and then does. after that i will go jason x just because even though they barely show it and it's just that one second and she's like ooh, and then she shoves the mask back down on him as a still shot that looks pretty fucking yeah, dope. yeah it's pretty cool and then uh finally my last one will be original jason and a it's because they don't barely show him at all like it's so quick, you barely see him, and also it's just weird to me. I don't want to picture Jason as like a naked twelve year old. <laughs> like yeah. it's just, but the makeup effects aren't bad. He actually no, they're, looks they're, like yeah, he's they're pretty cool. But he kind he kind of looks like he was involved in the rooftop scene in Ghostbusters, you know, like with the gargoyles yeah. and all that shit, just with the shit hanging. He off just looks all him. fucking swampy to me. You know, yeah, he needs, to, he needs to get his fucking skin checked out. That's fucking gross. Yeah, like, it's you not look that scary. It's like, I feel bad for you. Like you've got a skin condition. Yeah, it's not that it's bad. It just happens too mm. quick. You know what I mean? But uh, mm. so that is our ranking. And by the way, I do want to say I neglected to tell you guys this beforehand. But that ranking that we just did comes from our buddy, Mr. Critic, who is a Patreon. Oh. And we have a tier on our Patreon where you can choose uh, a video that you want to see us do, uh, a movie review or whatever. And Mr. Critic, who we appreciate you so much, dude. Thanks for being a Patreon. He chose, he wanted to see us rank the Jasons Unmasked. And that is our ranking of the Jasons Unmasked. So thank you, Mr. Critic, for doing that. Thank you, man. Thank you, Mr. Um, Critic, or Mrs. Th Critic. Th thank you, yeah. Show that us your deck. fucking goddamn listing. How dare you? No, it's good. Prove it. Cool. <laughs> no, that was, that was, as soon as he said that, I was like, that'll be fun, man. That was fun. Be really no, fun I, I, did, I did enjoy it. And Michael's like, I don't think we've done that. I don't, maybe I... No, we've done the masks before. We've never done, yeah. So this, yeah, is new. That, yeah, that was a great idea, man. And uh, again, that that tier uh, of Patreon is in the link down below. Appreciate you, dude. Thank you. So what are you and waiting for, huh? Just join, it. huh? Stick it in, Sam. No, we Sam really well. I mean, we love like interacting with most of you folk. Most of you folk. <laughs> some of you got Jimmy really John. Nice to have some of you guys in the in the uh, the Patreon streams too. You know, it's funny. The first hour of the show where we were just like just doing weird shit and like not doing anything i saw a lot of people in the chats being like this actually is kind of what the patreon streams feel like it's just weird crazy stories that we're yeah, not allowed we to tell anything. on youtube <laughs> we just told so, that's all it is uh, like if, if it was twitch it, it would be under the category of just chatting <laughs> just chatting <laughs> 100%. which by the way but it would be different like in just chatting you can barely go online and react to videos and shit like that that's fun I was mid swallow. Sorry, babe. Sorry, honey. Um, but you know, but you know, apparently uh, Twitch has got a big problem with DMCA. Huge, big dick problems with DMCA. Uh, we already have enough trouble. Like with that like, I know. I mean, that, I do. Uh, we would love to figure that shit out. But goddamn, dude, DMCA like doing like because we like to play music during our Patreon live streams. Yeah. You you if you get if you get caught one fucking time, dude. Like goddamn FBI, CIA, DOJ. <laughs> The fucking IRS, the NA, the NAA, the fucking NBA, the ABA, <laughs> the NFL, the MLB, the NHL. They fucking break Damn, down that your was, fucking door. I'm you pulled every, all that shit yeah, out. Yeah, dude. Every goddamn three-letter organization that you can think of that's scary comes to your house <laughs> and fucking butt fucks you on the stream. <laughs> promises, promises. Uh, hey, what time did you, what time stamp did you leave off on the super chats? By the way, I forgot. Fuck that's em. not helpful, Jay. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, uh, was it, it was, Austin? Uh, uh, no, 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 no. No, you didn't no. get to Austin I, I yet. I couldn't possibly. No, 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 no. It was the <laughs> you one did that. Not? I, no, it was the one that. Okay, go from the one that asked us to do the the Marky Mark and the Loomis one uh, with Bryson. 
Uh, Bryson, oh, wait. the quicker oh, picker I upper. Uh, oh no, I, I I can I can find it. Hold on. I got it. Joe Valentine. Okay, no, but I I know I got it. Uh, it was Michael Parton. Michael Parton, eight forty four. Oh, 844. Don't want your dick no more. Michael Parton says gay Dracula is not your blood he wants to suck. I thought no, dude, that, that's not it. Dick. That's not that that ain't it. That ain't the play, dog. Oh, it's oh, Michael Parton, oh. 844, dog. Oh, Michael Parton, thank you, buddy. We appreciate you so much. He says, I was thinking they could make remakes or legacy sequels to <clears> Wes Craven's <throat> and John Carpenter's other films. They could be from A24 and maybe Blumhouse. I you would know, I would trust A24 way, way more. Than Blumhouse yeah. at this point. Blumhouse, but, I mean, but, 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 but you, but I agree with you. They could do the remakes or legacy sequels, but I mean, why though? At this point, <clears throat> what's why? You know what I mean? Like John, Car like okay, for example, if they're gonna do another an escape movie with Snake Plissken, I don't want anybody other than John Carpenter and Kurt Russell in that movie. Yeah. And I think if you look at the trailer for The Exorcist, I think Blumhouse yeah. is, I think, like, just to me, man, I feel like Blumhouse has lost their way a little bit. I, I just, no. it does not feel fresh and new. It feels very, I think it's something to do with their their deal with Universal. They just feel very, very safe. Well, I think you said it before, just, I think they're they're going the Marvel way. It kind of feels that way, you know? It just feels like we're just slapping stuff out like it's written by AI. I just don't, I don't like it at all. <clears throat> and I think the requels thing need to take a pause for, but Huge. that being said, if I went back through John Carpenter or Wes Craven's movies and, and someone's like, would you like to see a requel to that? I'd probably be like, oh, fuck. Yeah, kind of. No, I man, I don't want to see, I mean, I mean, I don't know, man. Like, I, I'm I a mean, whore. Not really. I mean, Halloween, maybe. Again? again no because i mean you again. could like we talk about that like setting it in the 90s i mean i, I think it, it, yeah. either you uh do a sequel to resurrection or or actually reboot it and do it in the same style that carpenter had originally planned and just update the the scenario i don't know yeah even though i think that's blasphemous i, I it's but, but i mean at the say i don't know man maybe not right now street really is the one that deserves it that's it Again, as long as it's not Blumhouse, I, no, I think Blumhouse I, can't be touching anymore. They need to take a break and reconsider everything they're doing. Jonathan Hirado, thank you, buddy. Says, Sup, players? Glad to catch the live. I'm here celebrating my nephew's first birthday. Oh. My family and siblings and I are getting uh, knee walk, knee walking drunk and barbecuing. Wham for life. Fuck yeah, fuck dude. That sounds badass, dude. I want to be a part of your party. Can we come Holy over? Shit. Seriously. Yeah, I wish you had I wish we had seen this message earlier. We could have ended the stream and go have fucking barbecue and get drunk. Barbecue and people getting fucked up together that as family. Amazing. Holy shit. fucking shit, dude. Dude, we'll bring a karaoke boombox over and have what a fucking time. Austin says, Mike and Jay, I'd like your opinion on a tattoo. I've always wanted. Is it a dick? Do you want a big dick on your butt? You want a big dick? I bet Austin wants a big dick and it starts here. And it, like the dick point goes to his butt and then and then it ends. In his butthole. That's where the tattoo line ends. Is inside of his. He says, uh -huh. "I a big carnage yep. rules on my back based on the bloody lettering in his first appearance." No carnage. man. Ooh. No, I don't like. I mean, that's cool. What you got? What you got? I think what you should do. And I don't even do tattoos at all. But I mean, if you're gonna do carnage, he only does your, men with tattoos. <clears throat> I only do men with tattoos and suck their wieners and give them hand jobs. But what I would do if I were you is put on your back maximum carnage and have his face. Maximum carnage, like you know, in the in the in the cover where he's like maximum, like I don't know, man. Like this would be really, I don't know, this would be expensive. But you know, how, like carnage is like his arms are outstretched, and you see his fucking face like on the forefront, and he's like his hands are over the city, and you just see the skyline of the city, I like, like he's picking it over. That's, That's fucking dope. amazing, dude. Yeah, yeah, and it's all in red, and then I maximum like carnage, and all you see is like the uh the black and white of his eyes, yeah, and everything else is dark red. I, I agree with Jay on this. I think that sounds awesome. And also, but that's I like a that's a huge fucking back tattoo, right? But I also think Carnage rules right across the uh, the neckline, like on the on the mm -hmm. shoulders. It's gonna like for some reason. If we're just like if you and I are playing pickup basketball and I see that, my brain for some reason goes to you went to prison and this dude was like just riding you and tattooing Carnage rules on your back while he was. And I don't know why my brain goes there, but that just seems like the kind of prison tattoo someone would give yeah, while would. raping you in prison. Well, and, and if I were playing a basketball game with someone that has carnage rules, I'm playing an and one pickup game, no doubt. Right. And yeah. on top of that, uh, they're gonna score Make it, me. Take every, it. They're gonna score me every time because I will not block them. <laughs> like, where'd you get that? What's I will your not story, block bro? Like, what you try, dog? Like, I am. But yeah, that's that's the thing. I am trying. My brain doesn't go to when I. 
when I see a tattoo of Carnage rules, my brain doesn't go to Carnage the comic books. It goes to something else. Like that dude's lived a dark life. Uh, Austin, do you do yourself a favor, dude? Take in if you can find a screenshot of uh of uh Maximum Carnage, the Super Nintendo cover on the on the uh, cartridge. Take that in and like say you want that that shit is the coolest fucking like you guys remember that cartridge, the Maximum Carnage. Yeah, cart- she was, it was dope. Fucking red, and you had the the venom, dude. That's fucking cool shit. That's what that's you should a good do right idea. there. Yeah, you gotta find you a good tattoo artist. But I like where your head's at, man. Christopher Sampson, fly me to the moon like that bitch. Alex Crampson says, always a pleasure to see you guys. It's always a pleasure Thanks, to see Chris. you, man. Thank you so fucking much. He says, what if David Fincher directed a majority female cast with Samara Weaving and Jenna Ortega as a duo, Final Girls who kick ass, and it's not political? Very I love it. I love it, there. man. I mean, listen, that's all we want. That's all we want as uh, as cinema goers, right? Take the fucking politics out of it for a second. Take a breath. Take the tampon out of your asshole. And let's just have fun at the movies again. Can we just do that? Like, I have no problems with female action heroes at all. But it's a problem when, when it comes to a point where it's like, we got to make a message about it. We got to talk about it. We got to shove this shit down your fucking throat for 55 minutes. Maybe I like having shit through. shoved in my throat and putting Well, that's fine, Mike. Go to fucking game. prison and suck all the meat you want. I don't want that in my films. <laughs> But I will say, at the end of the day, yes, I would love to see it just go, let's just go back to the day when I was trying to get a job at Subway. <laughs> when it was like, not none of this shit mattered. When it was just like, is life the, worth living? Should I blast myself? Yeah, well, it's like, yeah. It's like when none of this shit fucking mattered. When it was like, the job of That's the, the fucking film producers was telling a good fucking story. Who cares what you got swinging between your fucking legs? Tell a good fucking story and people will fucking watch it. Holy that's, shit, it's not that difficult. That's only one important aspect of what he was saying, though, because I agree with you. I think Jenna Ortega and Samara Weaving together on screen would be badass. I'm thinking Lethal Weapon, <laughs> but obviously that's off the pace. Not but David Fincher, dude, David Fincher could direct a, 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 anything, like a fucking woman with white gloves with a ketchup popsicle, as they say. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I'm just ready to see anything from David Fincher, to be honest with you. I actually thought about that with my I'm favorite core directors, movie, too. That's for sure. Shut the fuck up, Jay. <laughs> Shut your That's fucking mouth. That's Shut your true. fucking hole. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, I, I'd watch that in a fucking heartbeat, bro. Thank you very much, by the way. Uh, Orlando G, a real fucking G, says, Mike, we all know you picked West for number one because it's the <laughs> He Who knows, doing, bro. The guy in apartment 23, he knows. Get, Get him and rape, rape him. him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so? Yeah, so? <laughs> he caught you out of your shit on your own stream. He said, fuck you. It makes no sense, Orlando, because you're just like, you only picked him because of one of the two best films he did. I was like, yeah, Orlando, I did. <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> I don't want to fucking be made laugh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love Scream. Yeah, so? I would, uh, I mean, that's fine, man. I, yeah, fucking go with your passion, bro. <laughs> What movie is that that I'm thinking of, by the way? I know it's Jim Carrey. <laughs> like, yeah, so? Yeah, so? Uh, that's dumb, that was Dumb and Dumber. Dumb and Dumber. He's like, yeah, so yeah. what? I want to go to a place where women drink wine. It's <laughs> like, like, yeah, I was like, I'm sorry, we're not Mr. Perfect. <laughs> Tyler McIntyre. I love your name, dude. I want to eat it. Like, I want to eat your name. I, I want you to be a special, like, Limited time release on the McDonald's menu. Fucking yeah. get that mac and turf. That's that. That's the fucking lobster for McDonald's, dude. Mac Steak and, and lobster. That sounds like, like shit that'll give you fucking diarrhea. Get that mac and turf. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a lunch menu item, like the Arch Deluxe. That will be it, popular for two weeks. It does. But it's also a bad, like no joke. It's a badass name. You sound like Mac Ready from like you know the thing, yeah. or whatever. That's a cool name, Tyler. Uh, hey, sexy man, who would each of you prefer for a pop proper adaptation of The Shining? My mm. top two are Ty West and Mike Flanagan. Uh, if Flanagan, I'd love to see Carla Gugino play Wendy. Love to you both. Love to you. Love to you. Uh, thank you, man. Uh, really good question. Really solid question. But here's the thing: I don't Flanagan. Think, well, the reality is they did remake The Shining uh, under the close observation of Stephen King in the. Uh, late 90s i think from the guy from wings <laughs> with the, that play i do it was really good it was a, it was a tv movie but it was actually really good um but if they're going to remake it and like actually do stephen king's vision well flanagan did dr sleep you got, right? yeah i was going to say flanagan's already familiar with the work and he did such a great job recreating the overlook 
Mm. And you can tell he loves the character. So you'd have to get Flanagan. I don't know who I don't know. Wendy um Gina Carina. You know, actually, I switched my answer though. By the way, it's not Mike Flanagan because he did Doctor Sleep. So we already. No, I want to of... get. I want to get the people mad. I said Gina Carino. Dude, oh, oh yeah, now I see what you did. <laughs> I want to get fucking people fuck. mad. About it. What the you fuck, dude? Fucking she's, fuck. a, she's hot, and I don't care. Fuck you. She... I think she's hot. <laughs> do you like to hear her punch she's you? Fucking in the face? hot, dude. I don't give a fuck. She's hot. That's fair. That's that. That's fair. That's fair. I, I I will say Ty West though because I think he's got this dirtiness to him, this crispiness to him. Like he made us watch two people. Two old people fuck in X. No, nah, it's Jordan so, Pill. Let's be real. It'll um, be Jordan Pill. <laughs> on, be Jordan I would watch. I will watch. I'll be I scared will. about that shit, dude. Who the fuck knows? There'd be those clones are, under the, yeah, in the basement. It could be too much. I, I will say those are two great picks. I'm going to say Ty West, though. I, I would like to. I would actually fucking. If Ty West redid The Shining, like it sounds like it should be blaspheme, but I would watch that. That sounds fucking gnarly. You I would need do to it. go to sleep. Shut up dick <laughs> ferguson said i'm with you mike i like to switch up my beer right now i'm currently drinking heineken silver it's good as fuck is that like a low calorie heineken like oh, a that is down there low carb well so when you were gone someone asked our favorite beers and i was like i can speak for jay in this because everybody knows jay's favorite beer is make a little and there are no substitutes none you're wrong but Jay did come over the other night and he drank some bush light with me and I felt like you enjoyed it. Or is that why you left? First off, I've been drinking West Six. <laughs> uh, I've been drinking <laughs> I've been drinking Coors Light, uh, Bud Light, uh, Michelob Ultra, of course. Uh, I, I, I've been drinking. Listen, I, there's a lot of different drinks that you get to sample when you live under a bridge. <laughs> when you're too drunk to remember how to get back home. So I've experienced a lot of different beers. So Brandon, I can't believe you. I'm kidding. No, it's just Nickel Bolter. Fuck, fuck everything else. <laughs> Brandon, oh sorry, I just fucking read that. I'm I I'm not drinking alcohol beverages. You know why? Because you could get addicted. Ed Boy Movies says, and thank you, man. Says on comic films, the tropes of villains with the same power set as the hero being evil for evil's sake motivation are so played out. Thanos, Joker, Killmonger, Mister Freeze in the comics and the like are solid yep i agree i, I agree um well i i personally feel like jokers played out though i feel like jokers played out i feel like um they did a really good job of explaining uh his origin story or or his reason for motivation with uh walking phoenix i know people are gonna be like no i just like it's going wrong but i'm saying like th they did a very good job of explaining why he's fucked up like that thanos did it for a you know um at least in his mind he wasn't doing anything evil he was trying to right. save the universe so in his mind he's the hero mr freeze is a tragic uh hero uh not a tragic well no he is he's a tragic hero to his wife i suppose and uh but yeah you're right i think that the tropes of villains with the same powers as the hero and being evil for evil's sake but i don't i, I don't remember the last when was the last time they really did that type of like just you know, whatever kind of villain. I, I, I don't, they all seem like they have levels of um, pretty good storytelling to each villain that's, I, that I've seen as far as comic book films. Yeah. I think that I do think there's a, there's a villain problem in that we always want to go back to the same ones. You know what I mean? Like in general, we always, there's so many like with Batman, with Superman, so on and so forth. Like there's so many villains yeah. like uh, that either have been touched on or just have not been done like a fucking apocalypse with x-men i mean that was not apocalypse dude no Come on. yeah that was fucked that was yeah. so fucked dude. that was one of the most fucked things i've ever seen how they treated apocalypse in that yeah. yeah and it feels like when a movie does bad with one of those villains in hollywood just forgets about it i was like no you need to come back to that because that was an amazing fucking story mm -hmm. you know what i mean like we need to do that shit again but do it right yeah. uh but I do think Onslaught's going to be fucking dope. I hope. That could be the savior of it all. We'll see. Robin Barker, thank you. Thank you, Robin. Uh, Jay, you got PP pee -pee one more time? I got to go one more time. And Don't then take your pee now. We're going we to finish this shit up, y'all. Finish it together. Uh, we've had some good goddamn laughs and some good goddamn times. I think somebody I'm asleep got with pregnant. a man. I think somebody got pregnant and someone had an abortion at the same fucking time. I don't know what's I. going on, but don't mess with me in a small town, you motherfuckers. <laughs> Try that I'll in be, a small town. I'll be right back with my goddamn American flag, MAGA. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, John Horsod, God love your face. Bass player for Papa Roach says, what did you guys think of John Carpenter's body bags? Uh, we did a full review for that, man. It was a Patreon request review that we did on a live stream. You can find that whole video, I think, on YouTube. Uh, we both loved it, though. Really fun. Fucking the fact that John Carpenter was acting in that and playing like just hamming it the fuck up and the opening scene of the gas station, all that. We both liked it a lot. We enjoyed body bags a big fucking big time. Big time. Big gun. Mr. Clumps, which is never what you want to see in the toilet, says this is my mugshot after I stole my ice cream truck. <laughs> that, guy stole... that guy driving an ice cream truck is the scariest fucking thing I can imagine in my whole life. Look at that fucking face. He looks like Gary Oldman from Bram Stoker's Dracula if he had access to a whole daycare's worth of children. <laughs> it's fucking gnarly, dude. Wade's Movie World. Good man. Uh, long time subscriber. Love your fucking face, dude. Says, hey, guys, did you know Mitchell Ryan, Dr. Wynn, Man in Black, played Commander William Riker's father in Star Trek, The Next Generation? I saw that episode of The Next Generation, and I saw him, and I said, hey, that's fucking Dr. Wynn. That guy's been in a bunch of shit, dude. Every single time I see him on Halloween 6, I'm like, that fucking guy. He reminds me of like a dude who would like be a guest star in Matlock or something. Uh, or like Magnum P.I. Like that guy's had a long storied career. What a fucking actor. What a fucking dude. Jamie Smith, heard of the Harry Potter series remake? Not a fan. Uh, I, I'll mention that to Jay. I've never been a Harry Potter dude. Can't fucking do it. Just the fantastical shit just goes whoop over my fucking head. I cannot do it. You, you got a fucking wand. Shut the fuck up, man. Come on. Calm your shit. Um, no one cares, Harry, in your fucking pot. Uh, but yeah, dude, I, I fucking... Uh, they could have brought back Dana Radcliffe as Harry Potter and been like, we're doing a new one. We're just making shit up. And I'd be like, nope not fucking going austin says can jay do loomis being tortured by the cinnabites but laughing at them because it's a vacation compared to dealing with michael what's in this blunt it's a good question what are you smoking i will bring those two questions up to jay when he returns jay scott you motherfucker you says hey you sexual sobs jay i hope things are getting better and mike well you're here <laughs> i love you too buddy thanks i'm glad to just be a human sack of meat just doing my best working my little fucking face off just to be a sack of meat to you. Just a fucking meat in the seat piece of shit that you don't give a fuck is he or not. I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to do my fucking best, Jay. I'm doing my fucking best. Suck my dick, Jay. Both him and you. <laughs> um, fun question. One, actually, I'll save that for Jay too as he comes back because that, that looks like it's going to be a fun one, dude. Um, and you know, in this moment, I will wait for Jay to come back for those and for some others. Oh, I hear him grunting in the back. Do you guys hear that? He just sounded like he just dropped a load. Just, oh. Oh. <clears throat> you ever hear that in a public bathroom? It's fucking uncomfortable. Hey, dude, I heard you grunt when you came in, and it sounded like you were taking big shit. <laughs> he said, oh. I did. Yeah. I did. I, I actually nutted. <laughs> I was thinking about my maggot He's flag. He's pantsless. My maggot He's... flag. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, by the way, I was just going to, I wanted to point out that really quick. I'm uh, we just joke about that politics shit. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck what you fucking vote for. Not I don't give one do. goddamn good shit. <clears throat> just don't Not do a... the, don't do some racist shit and some homophobic shit in the fucking uh, chat of shit. And, Hell yeah. Uh, you can vote who the fuck you want to vote for. I mean, if you want to vote for a goddamn Fig leaf, fuck it. Fig leaf. I love fig leaves. Fig Newtons. You know, fig Newtons, like, they they're suck. still good. They're still delicious, dude. But you fig eat them Newtons. and you're like, dude, fig Newtons. This... Why is it fig Newtons a gamer's like fucking food? It's like a shitty fucking burrito. I don't no, know. It's not. They fig used to Newton, be great. Dude, fig Newtons are good. Hey, there was a couple that referenced to you, so I'll just let you start there. It's at 9 09 p.m. Oh. oh. And just scoot your poot. You know, just scoot your poot. 9 09. Okay. Hold on. Jamie second. Smith. Uh, let me get there. Let me get there real quick. Uh, uh, I'm in a small town. Don't mess with me, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay, Jamie. It's Jamie. Uh, okay. All right. Perfect. Uh, okay. So I got it. Uh, hey, it's hey. So guys, uh, listen. I have a small dick, and I don't even know how I'm going to pull it out of my zipper to go pee pee. But at the same time, I'm going to let my much more capable co-host Jay take over. 
by the way, I use hair plants, hair implants. I mean, I'm so stupid because I'm so scared and nervous about the entire thing. But guess what? At the end of the day, I love dick. Mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, anyway, Jamie Smith, thank you so much. Man. He says, heard of the Harry Potter series remake. Not a fan. Uh, yeah, I think it's dumb. I don't know why it's even a thing. Why are we talking about it? Why aren't we moving on and getting that shit out of our lives? We don't need that. Okay, wash it off. Wash the trash off. There needs to be no Harry Potter series remake. What the fuck are we doing? I don't understand. Harry Potter is fine the way it is. Okay, leave it the fucking Hogwarts, all right? Stop. Stupid. No, it really is. It really is, Jamie. It's It's dumb as hell. Harry Potter is perfect the way that it was. Uh, Austin uh, says, uh, thank you, man. He says, can Jay do Loomis being tortured by the Cenobites but laughing at them because it's vacation compared to dealing with Michael Watson's plan? <laughs> I, you know, dude, uh, that's exactly the, the, that's the imagination that I would expect to come from a blood. But, uh, yeah. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, do that... Uh... Do that chain nipple thing that uh, what you were doing. Just I like that. Go ahead and do it again. Hit me with that chain. Oh, I like it. Oh my god. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Tell my soul apart. You don't even know what that means. Have you paid taxes? You dumb shit. Set a bite. This is a goddamn vacation. This is like going to the golf course. This is like putt putt. You pay taxes, dealt with Mike and Myers, have no money afterwards. You're not celebrated. You're not even goddamn revered at all. But you're just a criminal to some dumb shits. Oh, because how you treated Jamie. Because she was a little girl. Fuck that shit. She was hiding Michael. Yes, come here, Pinhead. Come here. Come here. Let me tell you something. You suck. Big Cinnabite dick. Leviathan is the only sustenance that you have. And you suck his dick constantly. The dick sucker. That's it. Go ahead. Give me more of that chain. I don't know. <laughs> I uh, that might not be what you're looking for, Austin. But uh, that's the best. I mean, that's a that's a interesting. Jay Scott. Thank you so much, sir. He says, uh, "Hey, you sexual sobs." Jay, I hope things are getting better. And Mike, uh, well, you're here. Just kidding. I love you. Fun question. Fuck one, marry, kill. So you can marry, kill. Hold on, but the one you, but the one you kill, you erase every movie they've done. Okay, so you're doing marry one, kill one. Okay, I'll wait for that one, Jay, uh, because that's a heavy ass question. I think I got my answer already, but I'll wait. So nine twenty one, we'll come back to you, Jay. We'll come back to you. Uh, also, Jay's got. <laughs> He says, you guys are the best. I'm drunk. Okay, bye. <laughs> oh, you're the best, Jay. I love that shit. I love that. Oh, you guys are the best. I'm drunk. Okay, bye. <laughs> that's how That's how I am uh, if if, uh, if I see a celebrity that, that uh, I've always wanted to meet. I'm like, hey, I love you. Okay, bye. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sam Squanch says, uh, favorite historical military leaders. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's so random, dude. I fucking know. I mean, favorite military leaders? Holy shit, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm not laughing at your question. It's just it's so random. Um, fuck, dude. I don't know. Uh, fucking Patton. <laughs> General George S. Patton. <laughs> yeah, maybe Patton. Take it to the 54. <laughs> That's so weird, dude. That's so weird. You guys talk about your favorite generals. Yeah, he said my favorite. He said, uh, yeah, Sam Sam Squanch. <laughs> he said favorite historical military leaders. Like we're fucking Bill and Ted. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I got I nothing, said, dude. General Patton, but uh, uh, I got to go back to this one. Jay Scott at nine twenty one. Once that he got, uh, yeah. Do you have one? Is it Napoleon? You dirty bitch. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Julius gonna, Caesar. <laughs> I'm gonna, the salad dressing dude. I'm gonna say Sam Revere. No, Paul Revere. Oh my Paul shit, Revere. dude! You fucking flunked out of history. We could tell. Yeah, Paul Revere. Uh, he told all those fucking people, "Hey, the these pieces of shit are coming." Paul Revere. And 
I love yeah, it when did. men say they're about to come. So yeah, that's, that's going to be my favorite. favorite right there. Yeah, he, he, had a, he was like, hey, we got a block party going on. <laughs> the, the British are coming. Uh, Jay Scott at 921. Uh, that was uh, I didn't answer it. So it's for both of us. OK, um, I'm a scoot, scoot, scoot. He Boat, said, scoot, uh, bogey. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, OK, that's what. Yeah. OK. Mary fuck kill. Um, Ar- Mary fuck kill Arnold. Jean-Claude Van Damme or Sly Stallone. Um, I'm going to marry... Kill, but if you kill one, you erase every movie they've done. Oh, shit, fuck. That's tough. That's mm. tough. Um, Be careful with what you do. Choose God damn. wisely. Choose That's wisely. tough, dude. That's so tough. Um, All right, well, if you... Okay, so the one you go kill, ahead. you erase every movie ever yeah. they've ever done. I, I know. Yeah. What, I already know what I'm going to do. Go ahead. I already know go what ahead. I'm going to think. All right, think. so I'm going to marry... I'm going to marry Arnold... Because he just seems like a good guy. He seems like he's fun to be like old with. Yeah. He has a fucking tank that he drives I around. I want to grow old with. Yeah, you. I'm gonna grow old with Arnold and like drive <laughs> around this tank and smoke cigars and just like like look at his old trophies when he was a bodybuilder and be like, it's so cool. And then I'm gonna fuck Sly because even at eighty thousand years old, he still looks as good as he did when he was twenty five. You're gonna fuck him. And then unfortunately, I've got to I gotta wow. kill. I got to kill John claude dude. And I don't want to do this. I don't, I'm dude. Shocked. I don't. With the blood sport poster behind you I and everything. Stop! <laughs> I can't live in a world without Rocky or Rambo or Terminator or Conan the Barbarian or True Lies. I can't! <laughs> I'm going to marry Arnold, dude, because, like, you're right. He just seems like a nice guy. And, like, we don't even have to fuck. We'll just hang out and do paintings together and shit. <laughs> Like we'll shop for Halloween well, decorations dirty, together. Your, your sugar daddy, yeah. I will switch you up though. I'm gonna fuck JCVD. Oh. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sleeping with Sly, dude. No, dude. Stallone is way too into himself. I could not have sex with Stallone. Like it would just be fucking. He would because he would call me like, yeah. <laughs> I can't do that. I can't. Yeah, you definitely got taking the ass. You're yeah, not gonna I have can't. any compromise with with, with Sly. He's yeah, like, I'm I think you ass, Adrian. That's what I do. Yeah, and he's never gonna be. Yeah, yeah, you're always gonna be the bottom of Sly. I feel like JCVD, you could at least switch him up. He seems like he's got more of a feminine skin tone. I could maybe throw a wig on him. Yeah, but, you know, uh, what, what makes you think that you're gonna be able to flip him and you're gonna be the 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 the, the uh, what's it called when you is it the bottom? Or yeah, the bottoms. I, I feel like JCVD would be a very giving lover, like a very kind lover. Know, like probably. Sly's just gonna fucking pound town. He also, hey, 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 for your JCVD can stretch. Right, yeah, he's he's, he's flexible. Very so flexible. there's all sorts of stuff you can do because there. Because of and my I, big legs, I can do the splits. No problem. No problem. And karate. But dude, you're gonna yeah. lose. You're gonna lose every I, slide movie I have ever. To. I'm thinking about my butthole. Fuck, I'm more like Rainbow love, and Rocky. I love movies, but dude, my butthole's more important to me. Like, <laughs> like, true. like at the end of the day, like, like, like JCVD is gonna be a lot kinder to my asshole than Stallone is. He's just gonna. You see him in Rocky when he's like trying to fucking. Uh, yeah, that's true. You know, trying to trying to uh, uh, make biceps. Yeah, he's like hanging. He's like, where you going? Adrian, don't, yeah. don't go nowhere. It's very. Yeah, right. but you, I don't want that. But John Clark could treat your asshole like the Kumite and just destroy it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's i don't know maybe it's good i i'm just thinking about the That's smallest wiener i could question. possibly grab here yeah i think i think jcvd is going to be a palatable wiener <laughs> i had to take a wiener from one <laughs> no uh yeah, Jay Scott. Oh, okay okay bye, bye. Like, i'm drunk okay bye <laughs> we're, we're drunk we're drunk too uh, like, okay sorry. bye <laughs> Uh, speaking of muscular dudes, mind matter lifestyle. That guy's mm. handsome and he's in great shape. And he Damn. says, "What's up, fellas? Hey, if you guys are looking for someone to lead you into the path of not being a fat fuck like Jay and myself, is that you know, really his picture? Mind, mind. Yeah, dude, he's fucking ripped. He's he's the real deal. He's Holy a goddamn shit, Adonis man. looking son of a bitch, and he does like fitness shit. Uh, good man. He says, hope you're having a great weekend. I've been benching Masters of Horror. Wish they still made series like this. We are overdue for a new great horror anthology series. It's time, motherfucker." Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> I yeah, agree, dude. but I don't. I don't like you commenting and, and making us feel like shit because we don't have a body like a Greek god that just like literally killed a titan. How we dare only you? hang out with dudes who are <clears throat> uglier than us. Yeah, what the? So fuck that's why we don't have doing, any friends. <laughs> what are you doing, mind matter lifestyle? What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> but no, you're right. Yeah, yeah, we need a new anthology series. Maybe we need like better like people that comment that don't look like you. <laughs> you're too handsome get the fuck out fuck of here shit, dude look at that body dude i just want to like like blow it up and put it on my i mean i, I want to drink like, smart water off use it. it as a motivational tool <laughs> <laughs> 
You're right, though. You know what? And nobody does it right. Anyway, everybody's like, oh, turn Halloween into an anthology. And I'm like, dude, that's dumb as shit. Anything could be an anthology series. Why waste the name of Halloween on an anthology series when it's just like every other fucking anthology series? You know what I mean, Sam? But like, there needs yeah. to be one. There does need to be one. There's yeah, an opening for it, and we need it in our farts. John Horside, you guys think James Wan would make a good remake of The Wraith with Charlie fucking Sheen? Oh, uh, I mean, I, I could see him doing it. I don't think he'd be the, the right guy for it, though. There's something about The Wraith. It feels, you know what The Wraith feels like? The Wraith does feel like a John Carpenter movie. I feel like you need oh my a John God, Carpenter. it does. Yeah, yeah. You, you need a John Carpenter type director to, to do that. I think Robert Rodriguez would do a really good job with The Wraith or Eli Roth. Yeah, or John Carpenter himself. I don't think I don't think James Wan is the right guy for that. It does need to have a grindier feel to it for sure. But I'm sure if James Wan did it, it'd be a good fucking movie. I mean, he did do Fast and the Furious as well, so he knows cars. Tonka trucks. Mukuro eighty says, "Sorry, I'm late. I was deep in Baldur's Gate three, but I am here and I brought Mick a little ball." Hey, all right. Fuck? Well, you're welcome, motherfucker. And goddamn, Baldur's Gate three doesn't even come out on the on the consoles till September. So I'm hoping you're fucking enjoying it on your PC Master Race <laughs> bullshit. Can I come over? I would come over and play that. Dude, that game looks fucking sick. I want to play that game. Speaking of fucking sick, Tim C! Fucking welcome back, Tim C. It's good to see you, hey, man. And what right, a fucking Tim, gigantic dong slap that was. Dude, thank you so fucking much. Thank you, man. Seriously. What an awesome, uh, dude. Beautiful man. Beautiful smile. Amazing dude. He says, hey, fellas, what up? Can we lock in a 15-minute discussion on Project Luby? <laughs> no, Motherfuckers dude. need to know. No, dude. No, dude. I want to, man. <laughs> I want to, but it's going to take longer than 15 fucking minutes. Dude, Mike, you don't understand. Project Bluebeam, oh, my fucking Lord, dude. It's going to blow your goddamn socks off into the floor, and then you're going to come right uh, after that. Promises, dude, promises. there's so much shit, dude. I'm telling you, dude. In honor of you, Tim, in honor of Tim and this uh, fucking amazingly gracious super chat, I will not Google this. I will not look no, up man. Project Bluebeam. I Listen. will wait. And at some point, whether it's on here or it's on a Patreon stream, whatever. And Tim, if you need it, just email me. I'll send it to you. No, no, if you don't, you don't look it up at all. Don't look it up. I'm going to tell you about it. I'm going to we'll tell save you about it. it. Shit. Okay. Hang on. Because Tim knows about it. Oh, my God, dude. Tim. Thank God, dude. Yes, dude. That's what I'm talking about in Patreon. Uh, in the in the Patreon stream, we will talk about that shit, dude. There's so much fucking crazy shit going on, dude. Oh my god, it's like I'm I'm becoming goddamn Mel Gibson in that movie where he's like fucking paranoid and shit. What the fuck was that movie? Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. It's like that. Holy shit. Yeah, dude. Project Bluebeam is like a fucking crazy ass, crazy ass uh, rabbit hole to fall down through. And I I literally like spent like six hours. It had to be six or seven hours. Like, it was a full fucking time job. Like, just going through all the stuff with Project Bluebeam. I'm talking about, I, I got scared at some point, dude. Like, I was Googling that shit. I'm like, God damn, the FBI could be tracking me. If I put Project Bluebeam in my fucking Google search history, it's like you're fucked. Well, like, the, the, the FBI agent's going to be right, like, in the, in the doorway ready to fuck your asshole with some subpoenas. <laughs> promises, promises. How about this? Actually, I will look it up. I, no, I will no, look it up. Dude, no, don't wait. look it up. Hear me out. Hear me out. I'll look it up and I'll learn about it and then we'll talk about it together. No, I, I want to tell you about it that you can look it up afterwards. I want to know where I'm coming inside. No, of. you don't need to. You're going to be blown. Your mind's going to be fucking like shattered, dude. Me All and right, Tim will it, help you out. Tim knows about it. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll fucking wait. I'll wait. Just have I'll patience. Fucking wait. I'll fucking wait. Love you, Tim. Thanks, dude. Thanks, man. Austin, do me a stop. Do me. <laughs> do me on it. Do me a saw and look up Hunter S. Thompson daily routine. It's pretty wild. Seriously, read it out loud. Hunter, Hunter S. Thompson's, Thompson's daily routine. Daily routine? <laughs> <laughs> Drink more Ovaltine? Oh, Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> we'll add that to the list, Austin. Now, now we have yeah, two things to talk about. Hunter S. Tom I'm going to write it down. I don't have a pen. Yeah, he, he's like Remember. A, in your, he's a famous author, right? Hunter S. Thompson. What does he do? Does he do a lot of crunches in the mornings? I'm up to a thousand now. <laughs> I thought he, I thought I thought he was literally a hunter <laughs> <laughs> of Thompson. The, I'm sorry, DJ Graham. DJ Graham, another one, another one. DJ Thank Graham you, crackers. Thank the you so much. Fucking... Holy shit, dude. DJ. Thank you, dude. Yeah, man. That's fucking. That's wild. Thank you so much, man. Uh, I don't know about being a YouTuber. But I love film, and I want to do something with a camera to make big bucks. So far, I got a laptop, but any suggestions for what kind of camera I should buy? Maybe I'll make movies or adult films. I don't know. Film is film. Man, that's, that's the attitude you got to have going forward, dude. I like that. 
A film is film. Adult films, whatever the fuck. Dude, I, I've read so many Reddit posts or people that started out in the porn industry as directors and shit. And that actually got them into the field of like doing like mainstream movies and stuff and TV shows. So yeah, film is film. You're absolutely right. As far as like a goddamn camera, that's Mike's uh, forte. But you have the right fucking attitude to succeed, dude. <laughs> Maybe you'll make movies or adult films. You'll start in adult films and then you'll learn the business and then you'll you'll go into the mainstream. That's some good ass fucking attitude. If I had the balls, and I mean the nut sock, to go into the adult film industry, I feel like I would do amazing things. I'd be like, I'm, I'm thinking about my shots. I would do that. I would do awesome. like, I watch I do that. all the time. I got research for fucking decades, dude. No, like if I know I'm gonna have sex, you know, like, you know you're about to have sex. Like I'm gonna take a shower before we have sex. I'm in the shower and I'm starting to think of all these. Like what am I gonna, what am I gonna do to switch it up this time? Like what am I gonna do when I drop? Dude, I, I do that too. I, you write fan fucking, like Sting. Yeah, dude, I got scripts in my head too. Like oh man, that would yeah. be a sexy ass fucking scene right there. Yeah. But I can't show it in mainstream movies. And they're like, why? It's like because there's no fucking story except the, the it's fucking. Fuck story. Yeah, if you're going, if, if I'm going porn, I'm going no story. Fucks everybody fast forwards through the yeah. story. I mean, I feel like everybody. Uh, at least I mean, I do. You can I tell. This, I mean, I've actually seen some porn with some decent story. And and porn needs someone to come in and change the game up because it's all fucking stepbrother, stepsister shit. I don't care about that. I don't. I don't, I don't have a step there. Everybody wants to fuck their stepsister. I don't know what it is. I didn't know this was a really? thing. Yeah, but like you're uh, Jay or uh, DJ. I don't know why I said Jay. DJ. You're on the right path. You're absolutely right. I don't know shit about fucking cameras. We've had the same camera for like seven years, and I'm pretty sure that's why our videos don't look as good as other people's. <laughs> like, I, it's fucking, it's fucking dog I, jet. I don't know. It's fine. It's fine. It, it works. It gets, it, gets, it gets the daily bread, but I don't know what that means. But yeah, dude, fucking do it. And someone way better than us should tell you about cameras because ours cost $550 or so about four years ago. So it's probably worth about $8 and 95 cents now. Well, here, well, um, I, I, I will say this to D, I will say this to you, my, my dude, DJ from not Cool house. Um, I think Kevin Smith said it like he said it best. He was like, listen, back in the day when he was doing clerks, like it took all this money and all this, like, you know, um, uh, investor shit to even get a fucking movie made like it took hundreds of thousands of fucking dollars to get clerks made and he was like you know uh maxing out credit card after fucking credit card and and renting and buying the most expensive equipment that he could make or that he could get to film this movie but i honest to god dude you could take a fucking android or an iphone or whatever and film a fucking movie that if, if in some way is groundbreaking or it's got a good story or, or shot well or whatever I mean, dude, honestly, your fucking phone, dude, might be enough. Yeah, your phone might be enough. And he, because Kevin Smith was like, dude, back in the day, we had to do all the shit, but because because of YouTube, he thought it was cool that anybody could be a filmmaker now, which is great. Because look at Pony Smasher, dude. Look at Pony Smasher. Yeah, yeah. I, so I yeah, but, but you're gonna be good, man. Don't worry about it. Fuck, fuck the camera shit. As long as you don't get a flip phone potato shit, you're gonna be good. And here's the thing: do this, do this. You see constantly, and we do this every single month. We do the, this this thing where we watch all the horror movie trailers that are coming out. And so many of these indie horror movies make the mistake of they try to do this great big production with this great big story and time travel and all this shit. And they've got nine dollars and a fucking can of spaghettios. And like, no matter how great the story is, no one's gonna watch it if it looks like shit. So do this. Do one of two things. Either do two people in a room with a great script, something like Sunshine Express. Look that up. Timely Ooh, Jones, Samuel L. Jackson, I like that or one. the movie Tape with Ethan Hawke. Yeah. A movie that's like amazing dialogue that you can just <laughs> film two people in a room. You don't need all the money. You don't need all the fixings. You got the fucking dialogue down. Or do a really short short. Don't. I, I would recommend. I would say don't do a fan film. Everyone's doing them. It's all out. Everyone's there's been a billion of them, right? Don't yeah. do a fan film based on someone else's property. Do an original thing and either do a horror short and make it scary as fuck, or do a do a really deep conversational script heavy thing yeah. that you can make look good with just a cheap camera. Don't try and, to do shit out of your budget. Just and, don't do it. And, and keep your fucking nose clean, dude. Keep yeah, your stay nose off clean. the cocaine. Don't say shit like on Twitter or like bullshit that'll come back and haunt you. Holy fuck, dude. I mean, we got hemorrhoids from all the shit that we said before that people said, oh, my God, <laughs> you fucking racist. Like, what? <laughs> all I said, I like white chocolate. <laughs> the candy, literally. No, uh, that's that's genuine advice, though. That's that's actual yep. genuine advice, as, as dumb as we sound and are. But, hey, you know mm. what? It's not dumb. The fucking fact that all you 
fucking pieces of shit. You beautiful good, good sons of bitches. Man. Good fucking time. Show up to hang out with us. We're so thankful for you guys. We have so much fun doing this, and tonight's no different. Tonight's been a goddamn blasty blast. And yeah, I had no it. idea. I thought you guys would have left. I, I thought we were going to like stream to about... A, uh, I mean, I, I get if we had streamed to five people, it sucks, but hey, guess what? We know. It's fine. It's whatever. It's the way the algorithm works, but the, the fact that so many of you guys showed up Man, what a fucking good time, man. Yeah. What a good fucking time. What a good interaction, dude. I had a good goddamn time. I like that yeah. we got to bullshit with you guys for an hour and just hang around, play with each other's wieners, and see who's My got favorite. a bigger dick. Of course, me. But it might not be. Probably not. But at the same time, I'm going to tell myself that fantasy. But at the end of the day, dude, we got Put we it got in my mouth done. and prove it. Yeah. <laughs> we got done what we got to get. We, we got done what we had to get done. And uh, it was really cool. To interact with you guys as always it's always fun to interact with you guys and it really means a lot it really means a lot dude uh to to have this uh vehicle of escape with you guys for real so really i appreciate it and i really do thank you guys uh uh i love it um and i definitely uh, am very grateful for it it saved it saved me uh, uh, in in a lot of ways so we really appreciate you guys hanging out with us and and just bullshitting around. So thank you guys. Fuck. Yeah. And also watch heels. Jay and I've been watching that fucking rules. Dude. Watch that shit. Dude, episode three it. just dropped, dude. Oh watch my God. Tonight. Oh tonight. my God. Do it. Fucking not, do it. You, you, are you not finished with episode one yet? No, I, I caught up last night. Season... Fucking amazing. Okay, well, I'm so not gonna tell you what happens, but dude, fuck, dude. Episode three okay. of season two. Fuck, dude. No, I caught up. I caught up. It's fucking amazing. Oh, you saw it? Fucking, yeah, it's, it's the shit. You, the it's ending, the that's where I got fucking mad, dude. I was like, why can't they just release this shit in bulk like Netflix? Yeah, it's fucking great. Now we have to wait till Friday. Watch Heels. It's on Stars. It's the If you like wrestling, you like if that? you like Do you dramas, like that, though? It does make you anticipate it. It does give you, like, <clears throat> I, I want it. Versus, yeah, like, well, you just binge it. I want it all right now. Hard Knocks was great, too. Hard The first episode, you should watch it. That's fucking awesome, too. Anyways, we're getting off fucking topic. Right, we love you, you guys. Thank we you gotta go. Um, uh, cool shit coming soon, uh, and I'm gonna come first because I always come first. See you guys at the club. Bye. <laughs> See you. Bye. I think we're.